the door for a lady. I think what we've gained far outweighs anything that might have been lost. Ah, oh? well, I'm not so impressed with this future. The huge starships and weapons that can no doubt destroy entire cities and military conquest as a way of life. Is that what you see here? Well, I know what you say, that this is a vessel of exploration and that your mission is to discover new worlds. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what the, the Spanish said. Deck 36. And the Dutch and the Portuguese. It's what all conquerors say. I'm sure that's what you told that, that blue-skinned fellow I just saw before you brought him here to serve you. He's one of the thousands of species that we've encountered. We live in a peaceful federation with most of them. The people you see are here by choice. So there are privileged few who serve on these ships, living in luxury and wanting for nothing. But what about everybody else? What about the poor? You ignore them. Poverty was eliminated on Earth a long time ago. And a lot of other things disappeared with it. Hopelessness, despair, cruelty. Young lady, I come from a time when men achieved power and wealth by standing on the backs of the poor, where prejudice and intolerance are commonplace and power is an end unto itself. And you're telling me that isn't how it is anymore? That's right. Mm. Mm. Maybe. It's worth giving up cigars for, after all.
What do you want? Here. Watch this. It's the amount of latinum I'm willing to transfer into your private account. If you'll just end this strike. Are we talking about slips, strips, or bars? Slips. All right, strips. It wouldn't matter if it were bars. I'm not going to end a strike unless you meet our demands. Mom, we shouldn't be fighting. We're brothers. Not when it comes to business. We're nothing but an employer and employee. You've said so yourself. I was wrong. No. You weren't. Rom, can we talk about this? There's only one thing I have to say to you. Workers of the world, unite. You have nothing to lose but your chains. Hello. Welcome in, everyone. I'm Sal with the Red Army, and today we are going to do something new. Um, I thought that we could do like a chat reads with me. So whoever would like to read, um, with me and is in the discord, get in the voice chat. We are reading Marxism, uh, Meritegu and the Women's Movement by Catalina Adrian Zenz. Actually, I think it's so funny that her last name is Adrian Zen. Because that, that reminds me of Adrian Zenz, but. <laughs> Thank, oh my god, Reggie's a big fan. Welcome in, Reggie. Thanks for following Chemathon. Hello, Caloria. Um, wait, this can't be serious? Oh, we are, we are so serious? Oh, FBI? <laughs> it's the FBI. <laughs> nice. The FBI is here. We have been infiltrated. God damn it, you guys. It's happened. The FBI has figured out our channel. I like reading. Looks like I might need to be watching the chat, though. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. Adrian Zenz. Oh, no. <laughs> right? That's such a funny, it's, it's so funny that that's her last name. <laughs> okay, I'm going to check the Discord. If anyone wants to read with me, I thought it would be fun. Like a, a chat, interactive chat day. What do you guys think? Oh my god, I got a... I got a message from my favorite person ever. Oh my god. Thanks for checking in, Reggie. Uh, sweet dreams. Okay. So, yeah. Whoever um, wants to do it, um, get in theory talk in our voice channels. And um, I'll pull you over to streaming. Oh, we got Caboose. <laughs> Caboose, remember to be on your best behavior. <laughs> Bread has no taste. Welcome in, Bread has no taste. I, I'm glad you found us here. Read theory, fine. Picks up Adrian Zenz. <laughs> got him. I would read with you if I wasn't half asleep. That's okay, Chen Li. Okay, I'm going to pull Caboose over. Hello. Oh, shit. Hold on. Hello, Caboose. Remember to be on your best behavior. Can you hear me? <laughs> oh, he left. <laughs> He's like, no, I can't be on my best behavior. Hold on. I'm going to go over here to this channel. Hey, can you can you hear me? Oh, wait, do I still have you muted? Oh, I, I have you muted still. <laughs> oh, my God. So he was being rotten when we were in the Discord watch party. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I got to put your output. 
Um, output. Okay, okay, speak now. Hello, hello. Okay, I can hear you in my headphones now. Yeah, I had you muted from the other day. That's so funny. Okay, so do you want to read with me? Um, <laughs> yeah, I have to look up the link, though. Here, I'll put it in the um, chat. And I'll put it in the other Discord. <sighs> yeah, Kooks is going to come um, on Saturday. So I wanted to read this still. So I switched it to tonight. So Caboose and I were going to do a thing on the Boogaloo. But mm, I think I'll save that for a different day. Different day. What do you think, Caboose? To be... To be fair, they'll probably keep doing dumb stuff to make fun of. <laughs> well, I don't really want to make fun of them. I just want to, like, kind of tell people about them, you know. Just give people uh, a real-life overview of what the Boogaloo, what is actually happening, like, in the Boogaloo. Because there's a lot of people <laughs> who just kind of make up stuff online, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Seen it. Yeah. Yeah, there's enough dunking on blank channels already. For real, for real. Yeah, I read theory proceeds to show collection of George Orwell works. Oh my god, this is so Orwellian. <laughs> it's like 1984. Which is actually, unironically, some of the Boogaloo's ideology. <laughs> Comes like, from uh, Animal Farm 100%. and uh, <laughs> Orwell, yeah. Or like, somebody told me they wanted to read uh, Sterner and Spooner the other day. And I was like, mm. please, please just... Just read, like, communist theory. <laughs> Don't read that bullshit. Sterner. But, yeah. Hello, welcome in Nova. I don't know. But for an exchange, I have to read that with them to get them to read George Jackson's Blood in My Eye. So I guess I'm getting roped into that. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And all that goes, read a book for a book. <laughs> yeah. But hey, if it gets him reading, I don't care. <sighs> yeah. So, do you have the thing up? And oh, if yeah, anyone else wants to read with us, you can, uh, and you're in the Discord, you can um, get in the... Actually, can you go back in the... Um, we're going to go in the streaming one, just so... That's what we're going to do. We're going to go over here. Okay. Hello, Comrade Clever Name. Welcome in. We are doing Chat Read With Me Night, where Chat reads theory with me. And today we have Caboose. Um, are you... Wait, unmute yourself. Oh, wait. There, I did it. You should be not muted. Caboose. Can you unmute yourself? <laughs> this is going to be fun. More coffee. Oh my goodness. Caboose. What the heck is happening? Caboose, can you hear me? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think I just kicked him out and then now I don't I don't know what I just did. Okay, actually while I'm waiting for him to come back, I'm going to put the Discord thing. Discord obs thing so you can see.
Sorry, we're going to start soon, I swear. <laughs> you can't hear me? Well, I don't know why you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? <laughs> I, I unserver muted you. You should be able to talk, Caboose. And I'm trying to get you in the, the streaming one. Hello? Now the little things on the screen. <laughs> well, he was talking too much during the um, during the watch party at the end, so I had to server mute him. It was what had to be done. I'm so sorry. Or am I? Just kidding. I'm not sorry. What the hell? Okay. Yes, only me today. Hello, Sean. We're actually doing a chat reads with me thing if we can uh, get it to work. But um, uh, whoever wants to can come and read this theory with me and discuss it. But uh, Caboose was here and then um, like I, it's not working now. So I don't know what the issue is. Oh, Blot's here. Okay. Blot, I'm going to drag you over. Hello, Blot. Are you able to speak? Wait. Maybe I have to give you rolls. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Let me just see. Permissions. Oh, yeah. It's probably the, this is probably the thing. <sighs> Shoot. Okay. Can you hear me now? Hello? Have to swap over to what server wants me. Hmm. I don't know how. Okay, fine. We'll go in the lounge there, the theory talk one. Can you all talk in this one? Can you hear me now? Can you talk now? <laughs> or are none of these working? All right. So, can you hear me? Yes. Oh my god. All right. There we go. Look at that. We did it. Yes. I love the idea of the reading, but I, I, if I had like a dry run of it, I would have been all set up. Mary Adagi, let's do it. Okay. Um, Caboose, you could go in and, and check what your um, audio setting is set to. You may have to swap it to push to talk and then back. It, it, it wouldn't be leftist audio if it worked. For real. Okay. I heard you, I think. Yeah, we can hear him. Caboose, you are auto. Nice. Cool. Alright, everyone can be heard now. Alright, let's start. The Woman's Question and Marxism. The woman question is an important question for the popular struggle and its importance is greater today because actions are intensified which tend to mobilize women. A necessary and fruitful mobilization from the working class viewpoint and in the service of the masses of the people. 
but which promoted by and for the benefit of the exploiting classes acts as an element which divides and fetters the people's struggle. In this new period of politi politiz oh my god, politization, politiz oh, I can't even say that word right now, politization, that's the way you say it, of the masses of women in which we now evolve, with its base in a greater economic participation by women in the country, it is indispensable to pay, seri in, uh, to pay serious attention to the woman question as regards study and research, political incorporation, and consistent organizing work, a task which demands keeping in mind Maritegu's thesis, which teaches that women, like men, are reactionary, centrists, or revolutionaries. They cannot, therefore, all fight the same battle side by side. In today's human panorama, class differentiates the individual more than the sex. That way, from the beginning, the need to understand the women's question scientifically doubtless, uh, doubtlessly demands that we start from the Marxist concept of the working class. So, um, another thing about Catalina is that she is a researcher as well. So, that's where she's coming from, like a, a Marxist and a researcher, like a scientist. So, yeah. Hello, dog face. Um, who wants to read? I can go. Okay. Yep. Okay, the theory of women as deficient feminine nature. Through the centuries, the exploiting classes have sustained and imposed the pseudo theory of deficient feminine nature that has served to justify the oppression which, up to now, women experience in societies in which exploitation continues to prevail that way the jewish men's prayer blessed be the god our lord and lord of all the worlds for not having made me a woman oh, god. and conformity by the jewish women who pray blessed be the lord who has created me according to his will clearly expressed the contempt the ancient world had for the women's condition these ideas also predominated in greek slave society the famous Pythagoras said, There is a good principle which has created order, light, and, a man, and man, and there is a bad principle that has created chaos, darkness, and woman. And even that great philosopher Aristotle pronounced, The female is female by virtue of certain qualitative fault, and the character of women suffers from a natural deficit. What the fuck? That's so Jeez. fucking rude. <laughs> the fuck? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All facts. God damn it, dog face. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, <laughs> Sean. Sorry, Caboose, go ahead. Uh, these proposals passed on to the final period of Roman slave society and to the Middle Ages. The contempt for women intensifying in the in Christian thinkers by imputing her with being the source of sin and waiting room of hell. Uh, Tertullian claimed, "Women, you are the door of the devil. You have persuaded him whom the devil did not dare attack frontally. By your fault, the Son of God had to die. You should always go dressed in mourning and rags." And Augustine of Hipponia. The woman is a beast who is neither firm nor stable. While these condemned, other, others passed sentence on feminine inferiority and obedience. Thus, Paul of Tarsus, the apostle, uh, preached, Man was not taken from woman, but woman from man. And just as the church is to Christ, let woman be submitted in all things to her husband. And hundreds of years later, in the 13th century, Thomas Aquinas followed with similar preaching man is the head of the woman just as christ is the head of man and it is a fact that women that woman is destined to live under the authority of man and that she has no authority by herself so yeah like this has been a thing for like a while <laughs> we, <laughs> we poor women have, uh, been the uh, 
you know, it's all been our fault, you know, kind of just like a, a thing, you know, that's living in the patriarchy. Women are destined to live under the authority of man. Oh, boy. Okay. They really didn't give women a chance back then. No. <laughs> Just a parade of misogyny. <laughs> Who would have known that uh, the apostles were fucking incels, you know? <laughs> yeah, heads up. <laughs> <laughs> um. Actually, hold on. I, I I need to refresh my drink. Uh. Don't you don't married, you can kiss on the lips. Because I, I want to <laughs> okay. like be Great. here for that. But so, just, you know, right. talk to chat. Talk amongst ourselves. Uh. Yeah. Chat. Is that Candor Set or Candor Say? I know it's Marietta Gee. I know how that one goes. Anybody? Yeah. So you're gonna have to watch chat also because I'm on my phone. I don't want to fuck up the Discord chat. I don't want to do that. Oh, can you can you see chat? Are you on a computer or something? Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't do this one at all. Oh. Yeah, one of these days, I'll get a computer, then I can do streaming and stuff, or yeah. participate at least. Well, um, I might be able to help you out. Um, in that sometime down the road. Uh, it, I, you got roots of where you're at, and so I wouldn't try to approach you. I think family's important. Yeah. I always wish that people that uh, I have some way to help were closer by. <laughs> That's kind of the way you are. Like It's it's natural to kind of feel like a wide diaspora in the, the South. And even if you're neighbors, you might not know because it's hard to signal to each other. Safely. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really have any roots, family roots here. It's just I, I don't want to leave South Carolina because of the uh, the activism and stuff and the different groups. And, well, the good yeah. news is there's activism everywhere. You have to what? There's activism literally everywhere. Like there's anywhere you go, there's a problem, and we could you know activate about it. Activate. Oh yeah, like a cyborg. <laughs> oh yeah. So, okay, so what she is saying was, um, like, Maritegu had this thesis, right, that, like, class is, uh, differentiates the individual more than sex, but then she also goes to say, like, uh, how deficient feminine nature is, you know, like, all these examples of, like, historical, like, great historical thinkers, like, just fucking smearing the shit out of women. They're like, you know, life sucks, but at least I'm not a fucking woman. <laughs> so I just think that's funny. So she's trying to be like, mm, I don't know, maybe we should think about that. <sighs> okay. Do you want to read Blot? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the understanding of the feminine condition did not progress much with the development of capitalism. Since while Candorset pointed out its social root when he said, it has been said that women lack a sense of justice and that they obeyed their feelings rather than their conscience. That difference has been caused by education and social existence, not by nature. And the great materialist Diderot wrote, I feel sorry for you women. <laughs> In all customs, the cruelty of civil laws joined the cruelty of nature against women. They have been treated as imbeciles. Rousseau, advanced ideologist of the French Revolution, insisted all education of women must be relative to that of men. Woman is made to yield to man and endure his injustices. This bourgeois position is carried on to the age of imperialism, becoming more reactionary as time goes on, which, joined to Christian positions and reiterating old theses sanctioned through John 23, God and nature have given women various chores which perfect and complement the chores entrusted to men. That way, we see how throughout time the exploiting classes have preached the deficient feminine nature. Sustaining themselves in idealist concepts, they have reiterated the existence of a feminine nature independent of social conditions, which is part of the anti-scientific human nature thesis. 
But this so-called feminine nature, eternal and invariable essence, is also called deficient. To show that the condition of women and their oppression and patronage is the result of their natural inferiority compared to man. With this pseudo-theory, it is indeed to maintain and justify the submission of women. Finally, it is convenient to point out that even an outstanding materialist thinker like Democritus had prejudices with respect to women. A woman familiar with logic, a fearful thing. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. A woman is much more prone than the male to think evil. Those are uh, his quotes. Yeah. <laughs> and that the defense of women is based in metaphysical or religious arguments. That's fucking rude. How dare he call us metaphysicists? Eve means life and Adam means land. Created after man, woman was finished better than him. Hmm. Even the bourgeoisie, when it was a revolutionary class, only conceived of women in reference to men, not as independent beings. Okay, I'll read next. Hold on. Just gotta do something real quick in the chat. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Hello, Big Ben. Hello, uh, Polita twink, twink. Nice. Welcome. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> Lovely name. The development of capitalism and the women's movement. The development of capitalism will incorporate women into labor, providing the basis and conditions for her to develop. That way, with their incorporation into the productive process, women will have a, the chance of more directly joining in the class struggle and combative action. Capitalism carried out the bourgeois revolutions and in this forge, the feminine masses, especially working women, advanced. The French Revolution, the most advanced one of those led by the bourgeoisie, was the great nourishment of feminist action. Women, women got mobilized together with the masses and participating in the civic clubs, they developed revolutionary actions. In this struggle, or in these struggles, they organized a society of revolutionary and republican women. And through Olympia de, de, de Gauche? De Gouge. <laughs> in 1789, they demanded a declaration of the rights of women and created newspapers like The Impatient to demand improvements into their condition. In the development of the revolutionary process, women won the suppression of the rights of the firstborn male and the abolition of their masculine pri privileges, and they also obtained equal rights of succession with males and achieved divorce. Their militant participation rendered some fruits. But once again or but once the revolutionary pushed push was halted, women were denied access to the political clubs. The politi politicization was suppressed and they saw themselves blamed and urged to return to, to the home. They were told, since you have uh, since when have women been allowed to renounce their sex and become men? Nature has told women be a woman. Your chores are to tend to infants and details of the home and the diverse challenges of motherhood. Even more with bourgeois reorganization initiated by Napoleon with the civil code, a married woman returned to the subject uh, to be subject to patronage, falling under her husband's domain in her person and goods. She is denied the questioning. Uh oh, who am I? I'm like echoing. She is denied the questioning of paternity. Married women, like prostitutes, lose their civil rights and they are denied divorce and the right to transfer their properties. Do you want to read next, somebody? Sure. In the French Revolution, we can already see clearly how the advance of women and their setbacks are linked to the advances and setbacks of the people and the revolution. This is an important lesson. The identity of interests of the feminist movement and the people struggle how the former is part of the latter. Also, this bourgeois 
revolution shows how the ideas about women follow a process similar to the political process. Once the revolutionary upsurge has fought and halted, or was fought and halted, reactionary ideas reemerged about women. Bernard maintained, "Man is to woman as woman is to child." Uh, Comte, considered the father of sociology, proposed that femininity is a sort of continued infancy, and that this <laughs> biological infancy is expressed as intellectual weakness. What the fuck? <laughs> Balzac damn. wrote the, de Balzac. the destiny <laughs> the destiny of women and their only glory is to make the hearts of men beat the women is a property or the woman is a property acquired by a contract a mobile personal property because the possession is worth a title <sighs> in all speaking properly woman is but an annex to man all this reactionary ideology is synthesized in the following words by Napoleon. Nature wanted for women, for women to be our slaves, that they are our property. Woman is but a machine to produce children, <laughs> a character for whom the feminine a character for whom the feminine life should be oriented by kitchen, church, children. <laughs> a slogan endorsed by Hitler in this century. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> The French Revolution raised its three principles of liberty, equality, and fraternity, and promised justice and to meet the demands of the people. Very soon, it showed its limits and that its principled declarations were but formal declarations. At the same time, its class interests were counterpoised to those of the masses. Misery, hunger, and injustice kept on prevailing, except under new forms. Against such an order of these of things, the Utopians launched themselves with a sharp and demolishing criticism, although due to historic conditions, they could no, not reach the root of the evil. <laughs> Utopian socialists also condemned the condition of women under capitalism. Fourier, Fourier, Fourier. representing Fourier. This, uh, this position pointed out, the change of an historical age can always be determined by the progress of women. The degree of emancipation of women constitutes the natural path for general emancipation. Okay. Holy shit, I just scrolled. Oh wait, there we are. Confronted with this great assertion, it's worth ca counterpoising the thought of the anarchist Proudhon about Proudhon. women. Proudhon. Sorry. I think I've only read that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Proudhon sucks anyways, so fuck Proudhon. him. <laughs> <laughs> about women and keep in his keep in mind his ideas when there are attempts today to propagate anarchism to the four winds presenting them as examples of revolutionary vision and consequence Proudhon maintained that woman was inferior to man physically intellectually and morally <laughs> and yeah, see, represented Proudhon together <laughs> yeah uh, that's not his only but, fucking bad take too like he's got so many others yeah isn't it Perdon like the syndicalist isn't that what i keep arguing with people on twitter about um yeah i don't know but Perdon is like a reactionary so yeah oh here we go uh represented together numerically women have a value of 8 27th the value of a man, uh, <laughs> according to Proudhon. <laughs> nice. So, so for this hero, a woman represents less than a third of the value of a man, which is but an expression of the petty uh, bourgeois thought of its author, a root common to all anarchists. So, she says all anarchists hate women. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Catalina. <laughs> right. So, throughout the 19th century, with their increasing incorporation into the productive process, women continue to develop their struggle for their own demands, joining the workers' unions and revolutionary movements of the proletariat. An example of this participation was Louisa uh, Michael, or Michael? Louisa 
Michael, a fighter at the Paris Commune of 1871. But the feminist movement in general oriented itself towards suffragism, to the, str to the struggle to get the right to vote for women, in pursuit of the false idea that in getting the vote and parliamentary positions, their rights would be respected. That way, feminist actions were channeled towards parliamentary uh, cretinism. However, it is good to remember that the vote has, was not always achieved for free, but that during the last century and the start of this century, women fought openly and determinedly to get it. The struggle for the feminine vote and its achievement show once more that, while this indeed was a conquest, it is not the means allowing a genuine transformation of the condition of women. The 20th century implies a greater development of the f feminist economic action. Women workers increase massively, as well as women employees, to whom are added strong contingents of professionals. Women enter in, into all fields of activity. Sorry, I forgot to breathe for like the last paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. It, <laughs> In this process, world wars have great importance because they incorporated millions of women into the economy to substitute for the men mobilized to the front. All this, all this pushed the mobilization, organization, and politicization of women. And starting from the 1950s, the feminist struggle starts again with greater force, amplified in the 1960s with great perspectives for the future. In conclusion, though the economic incorporation of women, through the economic inc incorporation of women, capitalism set the basis for their economic autonomy. But capitalism by itself is not capable of giving formal legal legal equity to women. In no way can it emancipate them. This has been proven throughout the history of the bourgeoisie, a class which, even in its most advanced revolution, the French Revolution of the 18th century could not go further than a merely formal declaration of rights. Further, on the later development of the bourgeois revolutionary process in the 20th century, show not only that the bourgeoisie is incapable of emancipating the masses of women, but with the development of imperialism, the bourgeois concept as regards the feminine condition becomes more reactionary as time goes on and in fact confirms the social, economic, political, and ideological oppression of women, even if it disguises and paints it in myriad ways. So I figure if I say bourgeois differently every time, I'll get it right once. <laughs> it's bourgeois. Bourgeois. Okay, bougie. The bourgeoisie. Alright. I used to pronounce the R and like... Everyone would be like cringing, bourgeoisie. <laughs> All right, black. It's okay. I'll pronounce it bougie from now on. I don't, I don't believe in silent letters. We all have <laughs> I don't believe in silent letters. That's actually like why would why why would you have them if they're just gonna be silent? right? Right, the freeloaders. For real. Chapter three. Chapter Marxism <laughs> and the emancipation of women. Marxism, the ideology of the working class, conceives the human being as a set of social relations that change as a function of the social process. Thus, Marxism is absolutely opposed to the thesis of human nature as an eternal, immutable reality outside the frame of social conditions. This thesis belongs to idealism and reaction. The Marxist position also implies the overcoming of mechanical materialism, of the old materialists before Marx and Engels, who were incapable of understanding the historical social character of the human being as a transformer of reality, so irrationally it had to rely on metaphysical or spiritual conditions such as the case of Pior Bach. Just as Marxism considers the human being as a concrete reality historically generated by society, it does not accept either the thesis of feminine nature, which is but a complement of the so-called human nature, and therefore a reiteration that woman has an internal and unchanging nature, aggravated, as we saw, 
because what idealism and reaction understand by feminine nature is a deficient and inferior nature compared to man. For Marxism, women, as much as men, are but a set of social relations, historically adapted and changing as a function of the changes of society in its development process. Woman, then, is a social product, and her transformation demands the transformation of society. When Marxism focuses on the woman question, therefore, it does so from a materialist and dialectical viewpoint, from a scientific conception which indeed allows a complete understanding. In the study, Research and Understanding of Women and Their Condition, Marxism treats the woman question with respect to property, family, and state, since throughout history the condition and historical place of women is intimately linked to those three factors. An extraordinary example of concrete analysis of the woman question from this viewpoint is seen in Origin of the Family, Private Property, and the State by Friedrich Engels, who, pointing to the substitution of mother right by father right as the start of the submission of women, wrote, <clears throat> Hold on, just to pause really quick. Hello, Choice. Uh, we are reading uh, Marxism, Meritegu, and the uh, woman's or in the woman's movement by Catalina Adrian Sens. Uh, I think you pronounce that differently, but uh, yeah, she's a researcher and a Marxist and a Peruvian or a Peruvian uh, communist. So yeah, so she is just. Uh, doing a, an analysis on on women in uh, general, I guess, right now. Um, and we are um, reading as a group. Uh, this is the new thing I want to do weekly where whoever would like to read with me um, can just come in the Discord chat and, and hop in and we'll all just take turns reading and discussing what we're reading. So that's what we're doing today. Welcome in. Uh, I'm glad you like it, future, uh, futuristocracy. Thank you. Thanks for being here, everyone. Um, and I don't think Marxism is mentioned uh, at all in gender studies classes. <laughs> but yeah, continue, Blatt. Sorry. Oh, fine. Uh, so this is Inkles. Thus, the riches, as they went on increasing, on one hand provided man with a more important position than woman in the family, and on the other planted in him the idea of taking advantage of this importance to modify the established order of inheritance for the benefit of his children. That revolution, one of the most profound humanity has known, had no need to touch even one of the living members of the gens. All its members could go on being what they had been up to then, it merely sufficed to say that in the future the descendants of the male line would remain in the gens, but those of the female line would leave it, going to the gens of their father. That way, maternal affiliation and inheritance by mother right were abolished, replaced by masculine affiliation and inheritance by father right. We know nothing of how this revolution took place in the cultured peoples since it took place in prehistoric times. The overthrowing of mother right was the great historic defeat of the female sex throughout the world. Man also grabbed the reins of the house. Woman saw herself degraded, turned into a servant, into the slave of man's lasciviousness. In a mere instrument of reproduction. Uh, he did not know a lot about the Americas. <laughs> but yeah, for, from his point of view, from a very Eurocentric point of view, that, that's solid. Uh, do you want me to keep going? I can go. I'll tell you. you. You're in charge. I'll read. Okay, so this paragraph by Engels. Oh, I'm echoing again. Uh oh. Uh, this paragraph by Engels set, sets the fundamental thesis of Marxism about the woman's question. The condition of women is sustained in property relations, in the form of ownership exercised over the means of production, and in the productive relations arising from them. This thesis of Marxism is extremely important because it establishes the oppression attached to the female condition uh, uh, has its roots or has its roots the formation, appearance, and development of the right to ownership over the means of production 
and therefore that its emancipation is linked to the destruction of said right. It is indispensable, in order to have a Marxist understanding of the woman's question, to start from this great thesis, and more than ever today, when, when supposed revolutionaries and even self-proclaimed Marxists pretend to, be, er, pretend to have feminine oppression arising not from the formation and appearance of private property, but from the simple division of labor as a function of sex, which had attributed less important chores to women than those of men, reducing her to the sphere of the home. This proposal, despite all of the propaganda and efforts to present it as revolutionary, is but the sub substitution for the Marxist position on the emancipation of women, with bourgeois proposals which in essence are but variations of the supposed immutable feminine nature. Develop me, uh, developing this materialist dialectical starting point, Ingalls teaches us how on the basis of uh, the basis or on this basis, the monogamous family was instituted about which he says it was the first form of family, not based on natural, but economic conditions and concretely on the triumph of private property over spontaneously or originated common primitive property. And therefore monogamy in no way appears in history as a reconciliation between a man and a woman and even less as a higher form of marriage. Quite the contrary, it enters this the scene under the form of the enslavement of one sex by another as the proclamation of war between the sexes up to then unknown in prehistory origin our emphasis. Hmm. So what the fuck does that mean? Hmm? About the emphasis? I think I need to read that uh, hmm. paragraph over again. It says origin our emphasis. So Engels put origin at the end and was like, actually, just just made that shit up. I didn't find that in a book. I just said that. Maybe. The emphasis is the italics. So I guess we, we just need to shout whatever is in italic for emphasis. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Um, uh, hmm. Okay, so it's just saying but, that uh, the first form of family was not based on natural but economic conditions. Okay, so that's basically what it's saying. Okay. Or it's and he's real mad about monogamy. Real mad. Yeah, well, me Oh, too. yeah, it's saying. <laughs> monogamy is not natural. I, that's right. That makes, yeah. It's saying that monogamy was uh, like kind of a more economic situation rather than natural, right? Okay, so I think we get it. Hey, Sebs, welcome in. Um, okay, after establishing that private property sustains the monogamous family form, which sanctions the oppression of women. Ingalls established the correspondence of the three fundamental forms of marriage with the three great stages of human evolution, savagery and marriage by groups, barbarism and pairing marriages, civilization and monogamy, with its complete er, complements, adultery and prostitution. <laughs> right? Because like, so that's funny because they're like, you know, trying to put people in these monogamous relationships and like make that the basis in like what it is but there's like adultery and prostitution and like all that stuff they're straying from that monogamy which i don't know they're saying that it's like monogamy is human nature right they're trying to just like lie um what is human nature anyways like that's what people always say to like Oh, it's just human nature. It's what women were supposed to do. They're supposed to be in the kitchen. It's reactionary. Uh, okay, so that way the Marxist classics developed by these thesis about how about the historically variable social conditions of women and our place in society, pointing out how the feminine conditions is intimately linked with private property, the family, and the state. 
which is the apparatus that legalizes such relations and imposes and sustains them by force. This scientific proposition, uh, systematized by Ingalls, is a product of the Marxist analysis of the condition of women throughout history, and the most elementary study fully corroborates the accuracy and actuality of these proposals which are the foundation and starting point of the working class for the understanding of the women's question let's make a historical recount allowing us to illustrate what Ingalls and the classic set forth in the primitive community with the natural divisions of labor based on age and sex men and women developed their lives on spontaneous equality and the participation of women in the social group decisions Later on, women were surrounded with respect and consideration, a differential and even privileged treatment. Once riches began to grow, which heightened the position of men in the family, pushing forward the substitution of father rights for mother right, women began to move to the background and their position deteriorated. Echoes of this reached the times of Greek tragic Achilles of the Greek tragic Achilles who in his work oh my god that's equally hard to say Eumenida wrote it is not mother who engenders that which is called her son she is only the nurse of the embryo deposit in her womb who engenders her is the father the woman receives the seeds as a foreign depository and she preserves it if so pleases the gods. Thus, in Greek slave society, the condition of women in the, that of submission, social inferiority, and the object of contempt, of them it said, the slave absolutely lacks the freedom to deliberate. Woman has it but in a weak and if inefficient manner, said Aristotle. The best woman is that of whom men speak the least. <laughs> Pericles, and the answer of the husband, or and the answer by the husband who investigates public affairs, it's not your thing. Shut, shut up, lest I hit you. Keep on weaving, Aristophanes, uh, Lysistrata. What reality is entailed by these words? Women in Greece were kept as perpetual minor under the power of their tutor. Whether the father, the husband, the husband's heir, or the state, their lives passed under constant tutelage. They were provided a marriage dowry, a marriage dowry, so that they had something on which to live and did not go hungry. And in some cases, they were authorized to divorce. For the rest, they were reduced to misogynism and in home and in society under the control of specialized authorities women could inherit when there was no direct male heir which uh, in which case she had to marry the oldest relative within the paternal gens genes gens genes that way she would not inherit directly but was merely a transfer of inheritance all to preserve family property okay somebody else can read now Dang, so inbreeding in law. Yeah, I mean, but, you, they used to do that all the time, you know, to keep things in their own family. Hello, welcome, Mayor of Media Town. Welcome in. <clears throat> I'm also fairly monogamous, so natural or not, it is arbitrary, it's subjective. Yeah, as many kinds of broad proclamations. You're right. Hello, welcome in, Kiranon. Is, is that like a funny did way of saying? Did you say Kiranon? I it sound like I did, right? Kiranon, maybe. Anyways, welcome. Liberation okay. of relationships by constructing them to specific labels prohibits relationships from being truly open, communicative, etc., which is often results in adultery. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of factors that lead to, you know, adultery. You're right, you're right. Poor Kiro. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh god, not Q and not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, you can read now. Oh. The condition of women in Rome, also a slave society, allows a better understanding of it as derived from property, the family, and the state. After the reign of Tarquinus, Tarquinius, and once patriarchal right was set up, private property and therefore the family, gens, became the basis of society. Women will remain subject to patrimony or patrimony and the family. She was excluded from every uh, virile job and in public affairs she was a civil minor. She is not directly denied inheritance but is subject to tutelage. On this point, said Gaius, the Roman jurist, tutelage was established in the interest of the tutors themselves. So the woman of whom they are supposed supposed heirs cannot wrest their willed inheritance from them nor impoverished it nor impoverish it by alienation or debts the patrimon the patrimonial root of the tutelage imposed upon women was therefore clearly exposed and established after the 12 tables the fact that women belong to the paternal gens and to the conjugal gens, also strictly for reasons of safeguarding property, generated conflicts which were the basis for the advancement of the Roman legal emancipation. Sign Manu, marriage appears. Her goods remain dependent on her tutors and her husband only acquires rights over her person. And that shared with the pater familius who retains an absolute authority over his daughter. And the domestic tribunal appears to resolve discrepancies which may arise between father and husband. That way the woman can appeal to her father for disagreements with her husband and vice versa. It is It no longer is the matter of the individual. On this economic basis, her, her participation in the inheritance, even if tutored, and the conflict between the rights of the paternal and the conjugal gens for the woman and her goods. A major participation of Roman women in their society develops, despite the legal restrictions. The atrium is set up the center of the house, which governs work by the slaves, conducts education of the children, and influences them until a rather advanced age. She shares the works and problems of her spouse and is considered co-proprietor of his goods. She attends parties, and on, the and on the street she is given preferential crossing, even by consuls and magistrates. The weight of Roman women in their society is reflected by the figure of Cornelia, the mother of Gracchi, <laughs> with, Romans, with, Roman, with Roman social development. The state displaces the contention among the gens and assumes the disputes about women, the divorce, adultery, etc., which went to be heard in public tribunals, abolishing the domestic tribunal. Later on, under imperial rule, tutelage on women will be abolished, answering to social and economic demands. Women get a fixed dowry, individual patrimony, which does not return to the ag agnates, uh, parental relatives. Agnates is parental relatives. Nor belongs to the husband. That way she is given an economic base for her independence and development. By the end of the Republic mo mothers had been given recognized rights over her, their children, receiving custody of them due to the father's misconduct or his being placed under tutelage. Under em Emperor Marcus Aurelius, in the year sep, uh, 178, a great step is taken in the process of pr property and family. Children are declared heir to their mother in preference to agnates. That way the family is based on a link of consanguinity. That way the family is based on a link of consanguinity. And the mother emerges as equal to the father before the children. The children are also recognized as children of the wife and derived from the above. 
The daughter inherits just as her male siblings. But while the state emancipates women from the family, it submits them to its tutelage and restricts their acts. And simultaneously, through the social rise of women, an anti-feminist campaign was initiated in Rome invoking their inferiority and invoking their imbecility. Imbecility and fragility. Imbecility. <laughs> imbecility and fragility of the sex to legally reduce them. In Rome then, socially, women had it better than in Greece and acquired respect and even great influence in social life. As shown by the words of Cato, everywhere men govern women, and we, who govern all men, are governed by our women. Roman history has outstanding, outstanding exalted women from the Sabines through Lucretia and Virginia to Cornelia. Uh, criticism of women, not as women, but as contemporaries, developed by the end of of the first and second centuries of our era. In this way, Juvenal reproaches them. Lasciviousness. Yeah, lasciviousness. 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 That's a nice way to say horny. Oh, okay. Lasciviousness, <laughs> gluttony, to dedicate themselves to manly occupations and their passion for hunting and sports. So they were talking about... They were talking about some women. But yeah. Roman society recognized some rights of women, especially <laughs> the right the right to property, but did not open them to civil activities and much less public affairs, activities which they developed illegally and in a restricted way. For that reason, Roman matrons having lost their or Roman matrons having lost their ancient virtues, tended, tended to seek other fields in which to employ their energies. In the decline of slavery and the development of feudalism, to consider the feminine situation, one must keep in mind the influence of Christianity and the Germanic cr contribution. Christianity contributed quite a bit to the oppression of women. Among the fathers of the church, there is a definite demeaning of women, whom they consider inferior, servants of men and sources of evil to what has been said let's add the condemnation by saint john chryso chrysos chrysostomus a saint of the catholic church no savage beast is as damaging as woman <laughs> under this Fuck influence you, saint the john you dick continue under this influence, the advances reached under Roman legislation are at first mitigated and later on denied. Germanic societies based on war gave women a secondary situation due to their smaller physical strength. However, they were respected and had rights which made them an associate of their spouse. Let's remember that on this subject, Tacticus wrote, In peace and in war... She shares his luck. She lives with him and dies with him. Hold on really quick. So in the beginning, um, like what she was saying was like uh, all these other people want to put this like negativity on women or whatever as like a natural thing. But it's really just class antagonisms. Like that's what it is, you know? Like, it's just a way to subjugate the woman, to uh, alienate her from the means of production, right? Am I, am I right? I feel like I'm right. That was what the first part was about. Okay. Yeah, class antagonisms. That's what it is. Okay. You can at least... You're wrong. Thank you, subs. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know what? It's okay for me to be wrong. Uh, here on this channel, we engage in um, struggle sessions and um, we engage in positive oh. criticism where, you know, we should, we are allowed to criticize each other. Um, 
and move forward past it because that's what Marxists do, right? You don't just crumble at criticism. You take the criticism, you, uh, you know, you work through it and you implement what you, you think you need to. But yeah, criticisms are always welcome here. I am not always right. About everything but art. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Except for don't tell me my painting is ugly. Or <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Hell yeah. Praise hell, praise Dale. <laughs> Race hell, praise Dale, for real. This agreement is integral to a truly democratic process. Of course. Yeah. Like, we have to be able to disagree with each other and to criticize each other when it is warranted and necessary. And that doesn't mean that, like, life is over. It means that we work it out and we move past it. That's it. That's it. That's how we do it here. <sighs> okay, you may read now. I'm so sorry for interrupting you several times. Oh, it's great. We love conversation here. <laughs> Christianity and Germanicism influenced the condition of women under feudalism. Women were in a situation of absolute dependence with respect to the father and husband. By the times of King Clovis, the mundium weighs over her during all her life. Women developed their lives completely submitted to the feudal lord, although protected by the laws as property of man and mother of children. Her value increases with fertility, being worth triple the value of a free man, a value she loses when she can no longer bear offspring. Woman is a reproductive womb. Boom. Big, if true. If true. <laughs> <laughs> As happened in Rome, also under feudalism, we see an evolution in the condition of women. In function of the curbing of feudal powers and the increase of royal powers, the mundium is transferred from the lords to the king. The mundium becomes a burden for the tutor, yet the submission by tutelage is kept. At the convulsive times, when feudalism was formed, the condition of women was uncertain. Since the rights to sovereignty and property, public and private, were not well specified, the condition of women was changing and heightened or lowered according to social contingencies. First, they were denied private rights because women had no public rights. Until the 11th century, force and arms imposed order and sustained property directly. To jurists, a fiefdom is a land possessed with charge of military service. And women could not have feudal rights since they could not defend it with arms nor render military service. When fiefdoms turn into patrimonies and are inheritable, according to Germanic norms, women could also inherit. Good oh, look, we have a raid. Welcome Woo. in, Feminist Critique. Oh my goodness, what a lovely day for you to raid. Uh, we are reading um, about women right now. Um, we are reading, hold on, the, the title is Marxism, Maritagu, and the Women's Movement by Catalina Adrian Zen. So, yeah, welcome in. We're, we're doing some cool stuff tonight. She's talking about... Oh, my God. So sorry for your ear, though. <laughs> so we're actually doing a new thing tonight where we read with um, the chat. So... Whoever would like to take a turn reading with us can get in the Discord. Here is the Discord. And yeah, we're just taking turns reading and discussing what we are reading. So welcome in. Thanks for the raid. Did you like what we're reading? Did you like what we're reading? What what part are you at right now? Because I just messed up. Reading is hard. You say what part? Yeah, can you read me where you're at right now so I can, like, search um, it? We are just about to start the paragraph that is feudal property is not familial as in Rome. Uh, the last sentence before that, uh, the, the, the inheritable patrimonies does not improve women's oh, condition. I just spent, that's okay, I spelled feudal wrong. That would be the problem. Okay, feudal Pardon. property is not familial. Okay, we are there. Right. Cool. <laughs> do we have a volunteer or do you want me to keep going? No, you're good. 
if anyone else shows up, we can uh, lot of integrate them in here. But yeah. you can go. All right. Feudal property is not familial, as in Rome, but of the sovereign, of the Lord, and women too belong to the Lord. Oh, bless. It is him who chooses her husband. As it was written, an heiress is a land and a castle. Suitors contend to dispute that prize, and often the young woman is only 12 years old or younger when her father or lord gives her as prize to any baron. <laughs> the woman needs a lord who protects her and her rights. Thus, a duchess of Burgundy proclaimed to the king, My husband has just died, but what good is mourning? Find me a husband who is powerful, because I much need him to defend my lands. In this form, her spouse had great marital power over the woman, whom he treated without consideration, mistreating her, beating her, etc., and whose only obligation was to punish her reasonably. The <laughs> same sum codes required today to correct children. The prevailing warlike conception made the medieval knight pay more attention to his horses than to his wife, and the lords preached damned be the knight that seeks advice from a woman when he should participate in a tourney. While women were commanded, get into your apartments, painted and gilded, sit in the shade, drink, eat, weave, tint the silk, but bother not of our affairs. Our affairs are to fight with sword and steel. Silence. <coughs> Excuse me. That is how the medieval world of the lords demeaned and cast their women away. The 13th century saw the development of a movement of literary women, which, traveling from south to north, increased their prestige. The same one which was linked to chivalry, love, and the intense Marianism of that era. It did not modify it deeply, as S. de Beauvoir said in the second sex, a book in which abundant information about the history of women is found. Useful data, of course, aside from the existentialist concepts of its author, since it is not the ideas which fundamentally change the condition of women, but the economic basis sustaining it. When the fiefdom goes from a right based on military service to an economic obligation, we see an improvement in the condition of women, since they are perfectly capable of fulfilling a monetary obligation. That was the seniorial right to marry his vassals is suppressed and women's tutelage is extinguished. All right. While in, in Adobe Cult, um, you uh, can read next after Blot. I'll stop there. Okay. If you'd like. Do you are you um do you have the text open? Do you want here? Welcome in Gray Cipher And Devil You don't appear muted the Oh yeah, yeah. I think everybody starts this channel muted. Not the theory one, that's why we moved. It should be He's still I don't I, I had to go in originally and um, switch to push to talk and then out. It was just the demand of the thing. It, it may be gone now. Um, we'll see. Yeah, I had to go back in, go out and go back in. Maybe try that. be able to mm -hmm. this is supposed to be open to everyone
just doesn't show us muted on my end, or he, or she. Oh yeah. Them. No, I don't see they're muted. I don't think they're oh, muted. Oh, now right they now. are. Yes, welcome in. I don't know why it doesn't work for us. Sometimes. We'll do some tests stuff between streams. Make sure it can work. Yeah. Oh, no, that's... Okay, the mic's not recognized. I am sorry. Oh, my God. So, Gray Cipher... Um, uh, I, I don't know if it was Anyan or Gray Cipher. Somebody showed me this content creator whose name is... This guy, hold on. Gamer de Esquerda. Esquerda. That's how you say that. Did not butcher that. And this dude. Well, that's the thing about claims, you see. This motherfucker looks exactly like Lenin. I'll show you a picture of him, but like, he. he this person is Lenin. As soon as the ad goes. <clears throat> Our Brazilian Lenin. Yeah, Brazilian Lenin. It's you'll you'll see. Everybody needs a Lenin. Here he is. Our boy Lenin. He looks like a beefier Lenin. Pog. Love it. I'm what? And he's actually a Marxist Leninist. Nice. Like, that's just beautiful, you know? Is he MLM or ML? Yeah. A radical yeah, Adobe socialist. Ah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, Adobe Colt might have it fixed up. Let's uh, test. Hello. Hi. Oh. Welcome. Hello. Finally. Okay. Um, I do not know where you guys are at at the moment because I was messing with that. Okay. So we are in, yeah. at in this way, whether singled or widowed, right? Okay. I think so. Cool. Yeah, that sounds right. In this way, whether single or widowed, women have the same rights as men. In possessing a fiefdom, she governs it and fulfills its administrative duties and even commands its defense, participating in battles. But feudal society, like all those based on exploitation, requires the submission of women in marriage and marital power survives. Quote, the husband is the tutor of the wife, is preached. Or as Beauvoir said, as soon as marriage was consummated, the goods of one and the other are common by virtue of the marriage, justifying marital tutelage. In feudal society, as in others ruled by exploiters, slavery or capitalism, what has been described about the condition of women has governed and governs. But we must highlight that only in the condition of poor women can we see a different and softer condition in the face of marital power. The root of this situation must be seen in the economic participation by women of the pop popular classes and in the absence of great riches. The development of capitalism takes feudalism to its decomposition, a situation which impresses its marks on the condition of women, as we have seen already. It suffices to emphasize that in the beginning, and development of the burgs, women took part in the election of deputies to the general states, which shows feminine political participation, as well as the existence of rights over family goods, since the husband could not alienate real properties without the consent of the wife. However, absolutist legislation will soon fetter these norms to fight off the diffusion of the bad uh, bourgeois example. This historical exposition exemplifies the, 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 uh, the thesis by Engels and the classics on the social roots of the condition of women and its relationship to property, family, and state. 
It helps us to understand its certainty and see its actuality more clearly. All this carries us to a conclusion, the need to firmly adhere to the working class positions and apply them to understand the woman question, participate in its solution, and reject constantly and decisively the distortions of Marxist theses on the subject and the so-called superior developments, which are but attempts to substitute bourgeois ideas for proletarian concepts on this front, to disorient the women's movement on the march. Having exposed the social condition of women and the historical outline of its development linked to property, family, and state, what remains is to treat the question of women's emancipation from a Marxist viewpoint. Marxism fundamentally holds that the development of machinery incorporates women as well as children into the productive process, thereby multiplying the number of hands to be exploited, destroying the working class family, physically degenerating women, and materially and morally sinking them into the miseries of exploitation. Analyzing women and, women and children at work, Karl Marx wrote, quote, Insofar as machinery dispenses with muscular power, it becomes a means of employing laborers of slight muscular strength and those whose bodily development is incomplete, but whose limbs are all the more supple. The labor of women and children was, therefore, the first cry of the capitalist application of machinery. That mighty substitute for labor and laborers was forthwith changed into a means for increasing the number of wage laborers by enrolling under the direct sway of capital every member of the woman's family without distinction of age or sex. Compuls compulsory work for the capitalist usurped the place not only of the children's play, but of also but also of free labor at home within moderate limits for the support of the family. Uh, let me know when you guys want to step in. I don't know how much you're reading each. I, I don't think it's really controlled. It's kind of just whenever you get tired of reading. Okay. Someone else can step in then if they want. Is, is is Sal still oh, around? Yeah, sorry, I was like actually speaking. I was saying, <laughs> I'll read, <laughs> and then I started to read, but I was on mute. But here I am. <laughs> the value of labor power was determined not only by labor time uh, necessary to maintain the individual adult laborer, but hold on, uh, <laughs> but also by that necessary to maintain his family machinery by throwing every member of the family onto the labor market spreads the value of man's labor power over his whole family it thus depreciates his labor power thus we see the machinery that machinery while augmenting the human material that forms the principal object of capital's exploiting power at the same time raises the degree of exploitation by opening the factory doors to women and children making them flock in great numbers to the combined ranks of the working class, machinery finally breaks down the resistance of the male worker due to this, despite uh, the despotism of capital within manufacturing. So that's from Capital, which we are going to fucking go over one day, I swear to God. <laughs> I just ordered it. I'm nice. ready to read it whenever it comes in. Nice. Yeah, I need to order like a physical copy. Maybe that will help me get on my business uh, continuing his masterful analysis Marx uh, himself describes us how capitalism uses even the virtues of obligations of women for its advantage Mr. E manufacturer told me how in his textile mills he employed exclusively women preferably married ones and above all those who had a home and a family form were depending on her salary since the these were much more active and zealous than single women besides the need to procure sustenance for their families forced them to work harder in this way the virtues characterizing women are turned against them all the purity and sweat su sweatness <laughs> sweetness of their character are turned into instruments of torture and slavery holy fuck does marx miss yeah he probably does miss but this is a fucking this is out of the park just a boom over the fence 
Beautiful. That was the baseball thing. You're welcome, sports people. <laughs> but just as by incorporating women into production, capitalism increased exploitation. Simultaneously with this process, it provides the material basis for women th to struggle and demands their rights. And it's the starting point for the struggle for their emancipation. Since, as Ingalls taught in Origin, the freeing of women demands as a first condition the reincorporation of the entire female sex into social industry, which in turn requires that the in individual family is no longer to be or no longer be society's economic unite or our emphasis. Hmm. And evidently capitalism with its own future interests set the basis for the future emancipation of women as well as creating the class that will destroy it as it develops the proletariat. <laughs> On the other hand, their economic participation and of or in the the development of the class struggle pushes forward the politicization of women. We already highlighted how the French Revolution pushed forward the political and organizational development of women and how, by uniting them, mobilizing them, and forcing them to fight, it set the basis for the feminist movement. We also saw how feminist demands were reached through the rise of revolution and how their rights were abolished and their conquests swept away when the revolutionary process was fettered and thrown back. However, with all the positive aspects that their incorporation of women into the French Revolution had, the resulting politi politicization of women was but elementary, restricted, and very small compared to ma the major advances represented by the politicization of women by the working classes. What does this politicization imply? When capitalism massively incorporates women into the economic process, it wrests them away from inside of the home <sighs> to attract them to mostly factory exploitation, making industrial workers out of them. The way women are forged and developed as an integral part of most advanced and late latest class in history, women initiate their radical process of politicization through the, their incorporation into workers' union struggles. The great change implied by this is observed concretely in our country by the transformation seen in women workers, peasants, and teachers of Peru amidst the union struggle. A woman arrives at a more advanced form of organization, which goes on building her up and shaping her ideologically uh, yeah, for the proletarian concepts. And finally, she arrives at a superior form of struggle and political organization by incorporating herself through her best representatives into the ranks of the party of the working class uh, to serve the people in all forms in front of the struggle organized and led by the working class through its political vanguard. This politica politicization proce process, which only the proletariat is capable of producing, and the new type of women fighters it generates has materialized in many glorious women fighters whose names are recorded in history. Louisa Miquel, Anne Krup Krupiskaya, Rosa Luxemburg, Lee Julan, uh, and others whose memory and people or memory the people and the proletariat keep. Okay. For Marxism, yes. Oh, sorry, oh. you got. <laughs> You're fine. For Marxism, yesterday like today, the politicization of women is the key issue in her emancipation, and the classics dedicated special attention to it. Marx taught, anyone who knows something of history knows that the great social changes are impossible without the feminist ferment. Social progress can be measured exactly, like exactly by the social position of the weak sex letter to kugelman in 1888 and to lenin the participation of women was more much urgent much more urgent and important to the revolution the experience of all the liberation movement confirms that the success of the revolution depends on the degree in which women participate thus the development of the class struggle and its 
ever greater sharpening within the specific social conditions of the revolutionary struggle under conditions of imperialism, sets forth and demands more decisively the politicization of women, and that is that is why Lenin himself, in the middle of World War I, and foreseeing future battles for the working class which required preparedness, called to fight. Uh, I don't know why. Oh, quote 17. Abolition of any and all limitations without exception to the political rights of women in comparison to men. Explaining to the masses the special urgency of this transformation at moments in which the war and scarcity disquiet the masses of people and awaken interest in and attention to politics, particularly among women. And he proposed, It is necessary that we fully develop systemic work among these feminine masses. We must educate those women. We have managed to wrest away from passivity. We must recruit them and arm them for the struggle. Not just the proletarian women who work in the factories or toil in the home, but also the peasant women. The women in the various layers of the petty bur bourgeoisie, bourgeoisie, they too are victims of capitalism. With those words, Lenin demanded the politicization of women, the struggle for demanding their political rights, the need to explain to the masses the urgency of politically incorporating women, the need of working together with them to educate them, organize them, and prepare them for all forms of struggle. Finally, he emphasized orienting them, orienting themselves towards working women, but without forgetting the importance of peasant women and remembering the various classes or layers of women being exploited, since all of them could and should be mobilized for the people's struggle. From the above, we see how the politicization of women was proposed by Marxism from its beginnings. Considering women's struggles as being in solidarity with the struggles of the working class, that is why the century, that is why last century, uh, Bebel, Bebel said that women and the worker have in common their condition as oppressed. And why the Socialist Congress of 1879 proclaimed the equality of the sexes and the need to struggle for it, reiterating the solidarity of the revolutionary feminist women and the working class struggle. Or as China proclaims today, following Mao Zedong's thesis, the emancipation of women is an integral part of the liberation of the proletariat. And then it gives a reference. <laughs> um, this brings us to consider how can the emancipation, emancipation of women be achieved? Investigating capitalist society and societies in general where exploitation and oppression prevail. Engels verified that misery, inequality, and submission exist among men, and emphasizing the woman question, he pointed out, the state of affairs with respect to the equality of men and women is no better than their legal, legal inequality, which we have inherited from prior social conditions. It, it, it is not the cause, but the effect of economic oppression of women. And he continued, women cannot be emancipated unless they assume a large socially measurable role in production and are only tied insignificantly by domestic work. And this has been and this has only been possible with modern industry, which not only admits feminine which not only admits feminine labor in a large scale, but fatally demands it. This assertion by Engels taken out of context and unrelated to similar ones from origin, helps some people, pseudo-Marxists and distorters of Marxism, stretching his ideas to claim that, mere particip that the mere participation of women in the economic process is sufficient for their emancipation. Engels proposed that the incorporation of women into production was a condition that is that it is based upon which women act in favor of their emancipation, and that this demands the socially end domestic work which absorbs and annihilates women, which to Engels implies, Im, implies <laughs> destroying private ownership of the means of production and developing large-scale large production based on the social ownership of the productive means. 
We repeat that it is good to be very clear about this thesis by Engels, because today some attempt to hide themselves in this classic to distort the Marxist position on the women, on the woman question, and preach for the sake of, ex of the exploiting classes. On the plain and simple participation of women in the economic process, hiding the root of women's oppression, which is private ownership and sidestepping large scale social production based on destroying private property of the means of production. Foreseeing this distortion, as in other cases, the classic, the classics analyze the problem of whether the incorporation of women to the production productive process which capitalism began, was capable of making men and women truly equal. The concise and powerful answer was given once more by Mao Zedong in the 1950s. True equality between men and women can only be achieved in the process of the socialist transformation of the whole, whole of society. Lenin researched the situation of women in uh, bougie society and compared it with how it was under the dictatorship of the proletariat and an, an analysis which led him to establish from remote times the representatives of all the movements of liberation in western europe not for decades but during centuries proposed the abolition of these antiqu antiquated laws and demand the legal equality of women and men but no democratic european state not even the most advanced republics have managed to achieve this, because wherever capitalism exists, wherever private ownership of the factories is maintained, wherever the power of capital is maintained, men go on enjoying privileges. From the first months of its, of its existence, Soviet power, as the power of workers, realized the most decisive and radical legislative change with respect to women. In the Soviet Republic, no stone was left unturned which kept women in a position of dependence. I am referring precisely to those laws which use the dependent situation of women in a special way, making her the victim of the inequality of rights and often even the humiliations, that is to say, laws on divorce, on natural children, and on the right of women to sue the father in court to support the child. And that's from Tasks of the Women Workers in the Soviet Republic. All right. Anybody else want to take over? Blatt? I'll do it. From this comparative analysis, the conclusion is taken that only the revolution which places the working class in power in alliance with the peasantry is capable of sanctioning the true judicial legal equality between men and women, and even further, of enforcing it. However, as Lenin himself taught, this true legal equality initiated by the revolution is but the beginning of a protracted struggle for the full and complete equality in life of men and women. Quote, However, the more we rid ourselves of the burden of old bourgeois laws and institutions, the more clearly we see that we have barely cleared the terrain for construction, yet construction itself has not begun. The woman continues to be a slave of the home, despite all the liberating laws, because she is overburdened, oppressed, stupefied, humiliated by the menial domestic tasks which make her a cook and a nurse, which waste her activity in an absurdly unproductive, menial, irritating, stupefying, and tedious labor. The phrase emancipation of women will only begin for real in the country at the time the mass struggle begins, led by the proletariat already owning the power of the state. Against this petty home economy, or more precisely, when their mass transformation begins in a large-scale socialist economy. Thus, Lenin and Mao Zedong answer the anticipated opportunist distortions and pseudo-developments of Marxism, which today attempts to distort the theses of Engels and confuse the working-class position on the woman question. 
Marxism conceives the struggle for the emancipation of women as a protracted but victorious struggle. This is a protracted struggle which requires a radical transformation of the social technique and of customs. But this struggle will end with the full victory of communism. Hashtag communism will win. That's Lenin on the occasion of International Working Women's Day. The above, in essence, shows there is an identity of struggle between the revolutionary feminist movement and the working class struggle for the construction of a new society. And besides, it helps to understand the sense of Lenin's words, calling women workers to develop the institutions and means which the revolution placed at their disposal. We say that the emancipation of workers must be the work of the workers themselves, and likewise, the emancipation of women workers must be the work of women workers themselves. These are the central theses of Marxism on the emancipation, politicization, and the condition of women, positions which we prefer to transcribe for the most by quotations from the classics, because these positions are not sufficiently known and besides, that because they were masterfully and concisely expressed by the authors themselves, which relieves us from the task of pretending to give them new edit, more so after seeing their full and complete actuality. On the other hand, the distortions of the Marxist positions attempted today on the woman question also dis demand the dissemination of the words of the classics themselves. Finally, it is indispensable even if only in passing, to make note that Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Mao set forth the thesis of the emancipation of women and not that of women's liberation, as can be appreciated from the cited quotations. On this particular, it suffices to say that the analysis of the condition of women through history shows her as subject to tutelage and in a situation of submission with respect to the male, which makes woman a being who while belonging to the same class as her husband, or the man she has a relationship with, finds herself in a situation of inferiority with respect to him, an inferiority which the laws bless, sanctify, and impose. Consistent with this situation of undervaluing throughout history, we see the need to demand her rights to achieve a formal equality with man under capitalism, and how only the revolutionary struggle under the leadership of the proletariat is capable of setting up and fulfilling a genuine legal equality of men and women. Though, as we saw, plentiful equality in life, as Lenin said, will develop as large-scale socialist production develops. These simple observations show the certainty of the thesis on women's emancipation conceived as part of the liberation of the proletariat. While the thesis of women's liberation historically surfers as a bourgeois thesis, hidden at the bottom of which is the counter-opposing of men and women due to sex and camouflaging the root of the oppression of women. Today we see how women's liberation is exposed more each day as a bourgeois feminism, which aims at dividing the people's movement by separating the feminine masses from it and seeking mainly to oppose the development of the women's movement under the leadership and guide of the working class. You want Mary Adegui, Adobe? Sure. Get it. Um, okay. How do you pronounce her name correctly, just so I don't get it wrong? Mary Adegui. Mary Adegui. Okay. I think I uh, heard... Oh. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I heard Sal say it earlier. But. Oh, I, I probably said it wrong. <clears throat> I said Maritegu, which is probably wrong. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I was just... going to say, like, Maria Tegui or something. <laughs> I, I YouTube a bunch of people saying it, and I just found the people that seemed the most confident and uh, <laughs> had the most experience with non-English. And that that's what I kept seeing, was Maria Tegui. Okay, then you're Mary probably Adegui. right. Also, yeah, okay, also, let's read okay. Ben's question really quick. There was a paragraph about how child-raising is stupefying and menial and they saying that are they saying that child raising is inherently that or that we must view child raising as not that because if it's inherent then child raising would be anti pro worker yeah i think you're misunderstanding okay so uh, it, uh let's go back to this paragraph too 
and I think it was talking more about how child restricting the women to child raising rather than being an equal in labor was the issue. In ancient times, okay. society destined women to marriage and idleness or menial work. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just talking about how it was in ancient society, you know? I think there's also, like, like, if you look at how things are supposed to be structured in most theory in a communist society, children are raised communally to where it's not just one person's job because that kind of, you know, it restricts the child's development. It makes it to where that person only has one job. Um, so it's like, it's, it's inefficient in that way to where, you know, that child's not getting, you know, education from everyone in the community. It's kind of being restricted to, it has to be the mother. It has to be the mother. Um, and then, you know, the mother's not able to develop her own ways of raising her child the way she wants because it's always the way society wants you to do it. I think that that could definitely be it. Um, so it says that the feminine condition is a changing one and that it is the work which is imparting a great leap in this position and concept of women, right? So it's saying that this is how women were viewed, right? This is how they've been like pigeonholed into child rearing and menial tasks or whatever, right? Like I feel like, yeah, it's just kind of, I don't think it was trying to say that it is menial, like and that raising women is anti-pro worker. <sighs> Like, that these things have to be done. Like, people have to raise children, right? The woman is more than a mother and a female, just as man is more than a male, right? Yeah. So that... I, I feel like they're just saying that this is not... Like, exactly what uh, Adobe Colt said, that it's, it's not a job for just the women. It's a job for everyone, right? When you when you relegate it to somebody, it's like it is forced. Like you're the woman, so you must do this, these things and only these things, and you are um, you're not allowed to participate in the greater society. Then it, it is kind of the main thing to find, even if like child rearing itself is not right. And it do take a village, for real. <laughs> but yeah, I think you were definitely. Not, like, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, you. I was going to say you're right. Yeah. Yeah, like the woman's not, you know, if we want to call it owning the means of production, she doesn't own the means of produ production, you know, even if she wants to raise children because she doesn't have control in a patriarchal society over how she raises her child or how she, you know, wants to do her own work, you know. Uh, it, it's seen as an alternate form of wage slavery because her entire life is controlled by her husband. And, and, patriarchal society as a whole so they said yeah thus typifying the feminine condition in our society as serfdom of women S this semi-feudal and semi-colonial background which is it, it which in its roots is established discarding all interpretation sustained by the supposed deficient feminine nature uh, it's funny too how you know femininity is deficient and also, like, they're in charge of, well, actually, I guess they didn't see these jobs as, I, I guess they're important in society, but they were just like, that's what you, you were meant to do, you know, you don't have any other things besides that. Typifying. They, they are also very, uh, it is, it is, again, very Eurocentric, like, the perspectives that we're getting from these people, their ideas about uh, child rearing ideas about a lot of things mm. the idea of what, what historically happened kind of comes from what they knew and that's fair it's just we we have access to more now we know that that's not a universal thing and that we don't have to follow in their footsteps well ben too also in the beginning they were giving a whole bunch of examples like uh about how like you know ancient uh philosophers you know uh 
philosophized about women uh, and how they are deficient in nature. So here we'll read. Uh, I'll read you. Man was not taken from a woman, but a woman from a man. Just as the church is subject to Christ, let women be submitted in all things to her husband. Uh, the man is the head of the woman, just as Christ is the head of man. It is the fact that the woman is destined to live under the authority of man, and she has no authority by herself. Diderot, oh. I feel sorry for you women. In all customs and cruelty of civil law, join the cruelty of nature against women. They have been treated as imbeciles. <laughs> Rousseau, all, educated, all education of women must be relative to that of men. Woman is made to yield to man and endure his injustices. The bourgeois position is carried on on the age of imperialism. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it's just... This is the... This is what we've been experiencing. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of shitty. It sucks, you guys. I'm yeah. not a fan. And I'd also like to point. <clears throat> I'd also like to point out, like, they were talking about the rise of capitalism and the industri industry and everything, and they were talking about how it was supposedly making work easier, but actually, it just made it to where they added workers right. of making like more people work, and then also immediately child labor. So, right, the Marxists will say. Let us all be, uh, you know, emancipated from work. And the capitalists say, uh, let us free the woman from her home and, uh, you know, we'll give her the freedom to work. Right? That's, that's the fucking difference. <laughs> and that's... Like we were talking about earlier about um, the kinds of relationships and the, the kinds of attractions that we have. Like, there is... There is a, a great and precious value to self-determination. To mm. some idea of like, I I have a passion for doing this or that. And if if um, you, the woman in a relationship wants to go out and get shit done, look, there's who, who is anyone to, to say no? I like kids. I'll stay home. I'm a good cook. <laughs> Welcome in, uh, Champagne Brochless. Thank you very much for the raid. We are reading... Marxism, Mer uh, Meritegu is how I'm going to just continue to butcher it, and The Woman's Question by Catalina Adrian Zen. Um, yeah, it's just talking about like how The Woman's Question is, um, you know, the just, tank is I love that tank, but it's like women's relation to... <laughs> <laughs> well, we both said the same. <laughs> Wait, are there more tank emojis? I love this. I I made this new beautiful one, and she is just gorgeous. Goddamn, hey girl. He's a queen. <laughs> yeah. So I saw the girl tank. Um, but did someone else put a different tank in chat? I can't look at chat. No, just uh my tank thank you so much cb for <laughs> subbing two months you're just so sweet so sweet but yeah the woman's question is a a, a a a relation to you know the the means of production not the liberal women's question of like you know women's right to work you know i don't know okay somebody else can read uh, okay. And now I've forgotten again how we, the consensus on how we pronounce this. So, <laughs> 50 years ago, <laughs> 50 years ago, Mary Tegi, with his sharp historical foresight, perceived the importance of the woman question in the country and its perspective. Uh, quote, the first feminist quivers are latent in Peru. He, devel he devoted two of his works to this question, woman and politics and feminist demands besides many other contributions found in his writing. It is indispensable to go back ourselves to the source because in it we will find the position of the Peruvian working class with respect to the woman question. Even more, because this problem is a little known and researched aspect of Meritegui's work. Jose Carlos Meritegui taught us, quote, 
In our times, life in society cannot be studied without investigating and analyzing its causes, the organization of the family, the condition of the woman. And researching the nascent Peruvian feminist movement, he said, men who are sensible to the great emotions of our times cannot and should not feel themselves out of place or indifferent to this movement. The woman question is part of the human question. So let's keep in mind that from the beginning of its political emergence, the working class of this country paid attention to the situation of women, establishing through its great representative their position with respect to women, as well as offering fighting support to feminist struggles, as shown by the solidarity of textile workers and drivers with the women workers of A Field Co. in 1926. What was the feminist development which attracted such accurate attention? The condition of women in the country suffered a noticeable change, especially in this century and more specifically after the two world wars. While the condition of peasant women changed more slowly, that of her sisters turned workers and professionals experienced more rapid and profound changes. Eventually, the presence of women in our society has been conquering positions ever more widely. Last century, the action and literary work of Thorinda Mato de Turner Mercedes Cabello de Carbonera and Margarita Prejedes Munoz, apologies for the butchering, highlighted the feminine presence over a background of millions of peasants, workers, and other women who, while anonymous, were subject to harsh social repression of feudal roots. The Peruvian women of the 19th century had minimal access to education, and when she was allowed to attend secondary education, the educational norms followed would establish for her a watered-down curriculum comparable to the last primary grade for males, plus some of the secondary school courses these would follow. The abandonment of feminine schooling is clearly shown by the fact that while there were private institutions which tended or prepared students to enter the university, it was not until 1928 that the National Women's School of Lima opened its doors in Lima. Up to then, there was no such school of its kind in the capital city. It's good to notice how by the end of last century, some women educators worried about the education of women, proposing its renewal. It demands overcoming the erroneous concept of educating them only for marriage, which leads one to think such is their only purpose in life that their education must not be in the hands of nuns who, having abandoned the world, are not in position of forming good women, and that we need to end the misconception that the single or married woman who works outside the home degenerates socially. At the same time, they demand and create new educational centers. Teresa Gonzalez de Fanning was outstanding in this aspect. Similarly, college education was closed to them. Their presence at the university is not noticed until the 1890s, and it wasn't until 1908 that women were authorized to enter and seek a degree at the university and exercise the professions. The demeaning of women and their social outcasting is thus clearly seen in education. Oh, wait, However, hold on. with we the 20th... We got a trans... Or we got a... a, a thing. Hold. Maria Teggy. Maria Teggy? Maria Teggy. Is that how okay. we do it? I think we... Okay. Continue. Awesome. Thank you. However, with the 20th century transformations, women see an increase in their possibilities to pursue studies and work as professionals, most of them finding work as teachers. Only after World War II is a diversification of women's careers seen. University graduates, whom early in the century could be counted with the fingers of the hand, almost reached the current 30% of college graduates of the country. But what really would imply a profound, radical, and far-reaching change is the incorporation of women into factory production. The proletarianization of the Peruvian women began this century hand-in-hand -hand with the, induction, the introduction of machinery. Oh, and shoot. The we got a big raid. We got Left Flank Vets coming in. Welcome in, Left Flank Vets. We are reading with the chat today. Uh, so, yeah, whoever wants to read, just get in the Discord and we we are reading together i'm rereading uh marxism merit and the woman's question by catalina adrian zenz <laughs> that's literally her last name i'm pronouncing it wrong but that's like literally her last name but welcome in everyone you are all welcome uh, to read if you want to uh, and discuss this piece of literature 
you too can be a theory nerd. Welcome in. Thank you so much for the follows. Okay, you can continue reading. Sorry again <laughs> for cutting you off. Uh, real quick to answer this person's question about examples today of anti-women ideology. Um, just look at the internet, look at the incel movement, look at American churches. Gamer look gate. anywhere. Yeah, literally <laughs> look anywhere. It's still there. Liberal and feminism the is movement. also anti-women. Right. So, like, yeah, the modern liberal feminist movement is just uh, riding the coattails of, you know, revolutionary Marxist feminism, which we're that we're reading here, which is super cool. But um, instead of, asked, you know, like uh, uh, emancipating women, what they're going to do, liberal feminists, they will be like, guess what? We have a woman who is a, a, a general in the military and she's in charge of the drones. We have a woman drone strike uh, girl. Aren't we just progressive? That's liberal women feminism. Women can be imperialists, too. Yeah. <laughs> Hooray. Girl boss yeah. war crimer. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start this part. I can't remember stop. Um, but what would really imply a profound, radical, and far-reaching change is the incorporation of women into factory production. The proletarianization of the Peruvian women began this century hand-in-hand -hand with the introduction of machinery and the development of bureaucratic capitalism. We see in our environment, with its specific conditions, the situation described by Marx, and which we quoted above, with the productive incorporation of women as workers, the process of proletarian politicization, pol uh, politicization opens up to the feminine masses of Peru. The participation of women in workers' unions begins. Women join the struggle for salaries, the eight-hour workday and working conditions, they participate in people's struggles together with other workers in actions against the high cost of living and price increases, which develops their ideological understanding. And finally, women of the country admits a revolutionary combat become political militants of the working class. The process of the political development of the Peruvian woman, parallel to their incorporation into labor, provided significant gains to the country's class struggle in the first third of this century among which milestones we must highlight the struggle for the eight-hour workday by agricultural workers at uh, Poral Barranca, uh, Padavilca, and Huacho, in which five female workers offered their lives in 1916, sealing with their blood their adherence to their class. Just as we highlight their participation in momentous actions against rising prices and the high cost of living in May of 1919, actions which women workers organized a women's committee so as to channel their supportive actions and agreed to make a call to all women without distinction of classes to cooperate with their action to the defense of the rights of Peruvian women. In this great struggle, women faced police forces at their meeting on the 25th during which, after, after overcoming the bloody police repression, they proclaimed the following conclusions. Quote, The women of Lima, surrounding towns and peasants, met in a great public meeting on Sunday, 25th of May, 1919, at Neptune Park, having considered that it is not possible to further tolerate, tolerate the situ situation of misery to which the high cost of subsistence goods and residential rents and all of life's necessities have reduced the people that Peruvian women, as well as women in all civilized countries, have understood their mission to intervene in the resolution of the economic and social problems affecting them, have agreed, one, to make as their own the conditions of the people's meeting at the Almadea de los Descalzos on May 4th, two, in case those conclusions are not accepted, to declare a general women's strike in all branches of industry, leaving the date to the discretion of the men's committee for domestic, diminishing the cost of subsistence. Um, another chapter in this history of women's struggle was waged by uh, Socorro Rojo against the persecution, repression, imprisonment, and blood politics unleashed by the dictatorship of Sanchez Cerro, uh, defending the rights and liberties of the people, especially the proletariat. In the struggles referred to, Besides the politicization of women, or more strictly, as index of a correct perspective, it must be highlighted that in them, 
the feminine masses waged their actions intimately united to the people's interests, which are their own, and in direct unity with and support for the struggles of the working class, which is their class. In synthesis, the road traveled by Peruvian women in this century and the final part of last century is marked by their widespread incorporation into production and under bureaucratic capitalism pushed forward by North American imperialism and by their increased access to education, especially at the university. These are the bases on which the first feminist impetuses of the country will hatch, a phenomenon which, how did we decide this was pronounced? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Maria Teggy. Maria Teggy, thank you. Which Maria Teggy described as follows quote, Feminism has not made its appearance in Peru artificially or arbitrarily. It has appeared as a result of the new forms of intellectual and manual labor labor of women. The women with true feminist affiliations are those women who work, the women who study. The feminist idea prospers among women in intellectual jobs and in manual jobs professors, university students, workers. It finds a propitious environment for its development in the university classrooms, which attract more Peruvian women every day, and in the workers' unions, where factory women enroll and organize with the same rights and same duties as the men. Besides this, we have the feminism of the dilettantes, a little pedantic and a little mundane. For feminists of this kind, feminism is a mere literary exercise, merely a fashionable sport. So that would have been their version of liberal feminism, I imagine. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. It is on, it is on this basis that Maria Tegi elaborated the position of the Peruvian proletariat on the woman question by establishing the general line to follow on this matter for whom, whomever wants to develop from a Marxist viewpoint. Let's see the basic problems from this position. And whoever else wants to read can go ahead. Me? I'll read. The situation of women. The starting point of the study of women, of the women question from the viewpoint of the Peruvian proletariat demands to keep in mind that Maritegu represent, (laughs) I'm so sorry for (laughs) that fucking pronunciation. Do you want to see? Oh, somebody said they want to see me uh, roll my R's. Uh, so if I come across one that looks like it needs one, I'll do it. <laughs> OK, uh, that Maritegu represents in the country the application of the universal truth of Marxism Leninism to the material conditions of a backwards and oppressed country, an application which leads him to scientifically present the semi-feudal and semi-colonial character of our society, in the midst of which a national democratic revolution has developed since 1928 through a long and sinuous process whose higher stage is still pending. This is the substance and guidance of Maritegu's thought. And starting from these considerations, we must treat all the problems and policies he established among them what is relevant to the women question thus merit i i feel so bad just pronouncing it back all the time uh <laughs> thus meritegu starts from the semi-feudal and semi-colonial character of peruvian society to judge the situation of women this in itself rejects from the outset the obsolete theory of feminine nature Conceiving in women or of women in a situation or condition derived from the structure of society in which they function and emphasizing the dynamic changing character of women's situation. He points out that or out the transforming role work has done on the condition of women with respect to the social status and ideas about them. The following paragraph expresses these and other points well. But if bourgeois democracy has not realized feminism, it has involuntarily created the conditions and moral and material premises for its realization. It has valued women as a productive element and as an economic factor by making more intensive and extensive use of their work each day. Work radically changes the minds and spirit of women. Women acquire by virtue 
their work of a new concept uh, by virtue of their work, a new concept of themselves. In ancient times, society destined women to marriage and idleness or menial work. Today, it fates them above all to work. This fact has changed and elevated the position of women in life. So it remains clear for the Peruvian proletariat that it is society which imparts women their condition and not some mischievous nature that the feminine condition is a changing one and that it is the work which is imparting a great leap in the position of the concept of women. This is Meritagus starting point. At the same time, it charges against the biological determination reduction of women to simply reproducers and goes against the role colored, uh, the rose colored myths, which treacherously help to maintain their oppression. The defense of the poetry of the home in reality is a defense of the serfdom of women. F far from en ennobling and dignifying the role of women, it diminishes and reduces it. The woman is more than a mother, more than a female, just as man is more than a male. <sighs> Developing the thesis of this social root... Thank you for for hosting, subs. Um, developing this thesis of the social root of the feminine condition, Meritegu sets out the difference between Latin and Saxon women, establishing the casual connection between feudal backgrounds and temperament uh, and differences in each woman. The Latin woman lives more prudently, with less passion. She does not have the urge for truth, especially the Spanish woman is very cautious and practical. Waldo Frank precisely defined her with an admirable accuracy. The Spanish woman, he wrote, is a... Oh, hey, Ben, thank you so much for subbing. Welcome in. Uh, two months. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, where am I at? Um, she considers love as a means of creating children for heaven. Nowhere, or, uh, nowhere in Europe is there a less sensual, less amorous woman. A girl, she is pretty. Fresh hope colors her cheeks and enlarges her black eyes. To her, marriage is the highest state to which she can aspire. Once married, this innate uh, coquettishness uh, of spring disappears like a season in her uh, a moment she turns judicious fat and maternal signs and work waldo franks i don't know what that guy was he was uh doing some kind of analysis <laughs> what was said about the spanish woman naturally extends to latin american women and among them those in this country and it shows that the feminine mentality generated by the ancient and present feudal background is still not overcome. But besides this, analyzing the relations between imperialism and the oppressed countries of America, Maritegu highlights the alienating mentality which Yankee domination impresses the feminine mentality, or on feminine mentality. The, the Limenia, uh, the native of Lima, Limenia, bourgeois fraternizes with the Yankee capitalists and even with their lower employees at the country club, at the tennis, and on the streets. The Yankee can marry without any inconvenience of race or religion, the Creole Senorita, and she feels no scruples of nationality or culture by preferring, uh, preferring marriage within the in, uh, with an individual of an invading race, and neither does the middle-class girl feel any scruples in this respect. The Huachafita, who is able to trap a Yankee employed by the Grace Corporation or of the Foundation, does it with the satisfaction of having elevated her social conditions. Huh. Thus typifying the feminine condition in our society as serfdom of women and semi-feudal and semi-colonial background, which it is, uh, which is its roots. In, is established, discarding all interpretations sustained by the supposed deficient feminine nature. On the basis, or on this basis, 
Maritegu goes on the maternal uh, material analysis of Peruvian women belonging to the different different classes. He masterfully depicts working women. If the masses of youth are so cruelly exploited, proletarian women suffer equal or worse exploitation. Up to very recently, the proletarian women had her labor limited to domestic activities at home. With advancing industrialization, she enters the competition in the factory, shop, enterprises, etc. Thus, we see her in textile factories, cracker factories, laundry, containers, and cardboard box factories, soaps, etc., where she performs the same work as the male worker, from operating the machinery to the most menial job, always earning 40 to 60 percent less than the male. At the same time that women trains themselves to do industrial jobs, they penetrate also into the activities of the office, commercial houses, etc., always competing with men. And it's lucky for you that there's such a thing as chivalry towards your sex. I hate you! <laughs> what a good uh, I think you sound alert muted to do. yourself. Me? Oh, if there was a sound alert, then I guess it just did that. I can't hear sound alerts because I'm only on Discord. Yeah, you can't hear them, but they're, they've been popping off. <laughs> oh, there's a whole bunch of... Yeah, I think that that was um, some Yankees interpretation of um, Latin women, uh, Gray Cipher. I don't know if that was... Um, an actual analysis. I don't know. It's probably the best Marxist author from Latin America, but he was from 1919. Nice. Racism and misogyny collide for real. I feel like we would need Peruvians to explain that because ta uh, taking Spanish people as a framework to explain Peruvian people is a bit weird. What about all the Inca influences? Yeah, there's a lot of this that I feel like there's probably other reading that we could do to better understand what they mean by this. And also, I th think that... <sighs> yeah, so this is from Waldo Frank, who was saying that. And I think that... Yeah, this was from, yeah, oh, we gotta, we would have to read all of these to fucking truly get where they're coming from. But that's how it is with all Marxist reading, is if you read one thing, you will have to read a few more things. <laughs> oh shit, I lost my place. Where was I at? Anyone else want to read? Um, sure, yeah. I've, uh, it's been nice being out of a chat just reading because between readings, I've cleaned the kitchen, started dishes, I've baked a pizza, and I've cleaned my living room. Praxis. Fucking great. <laughs> well, yeah, this okay, text think... is from the 70s. Praxis, so you love it. Praxis yes. Um, but the Marxist analysis of it, I, I feel like the Marxist analysis still holds true that like all this is uh, all the woman, the nature of the woman's struggle is not nature, right? But it is a class struggle, which is what uh, Catalina is saying. But yeah, some of the people in here that she's quoting that are talking about the nature of women, women's nature are absolutely Ben Shapiro fuckheads. Yes. So that's happening. <laughs> but yes, somebody else may read. But good job, you got your stuff done. Um, and then I said, uh, I think you were at the 40 to 60% less than the male. And I'll just start after that um, about women earning less. At the same time that women train themselves to do industrial jobs, they penetrate also into the activities of the office, commercial houses, etc., always competing with men and to the great benefit of the industrial enterprises, which get a noticeable reduction in salaries and immediate increase in profits. 
In agriculture and mining, we find proletarian women in frank competition with men. And wherever we may look, we find large numbers of exploited women rendering their services in all sorts of activities. In the process of our social struggles, the proletariat has had to set forth specific demands for their defense. Textile unions, which up to now have shown the greatest interest in this question, though not exclusively so, have gone on strike more than once with the object of forcing compliance with regulations which, specified by law, the capitalists simply refuse to implement. We have some capitalists, such as the friend of the worker Mr. Taizani Ibueno, who have not hesitated to consider as an offense the fact that a woman worker was pregnant, for which offense she was ter she has been terminated so as to avoid complying with no, the, like it's an with offense. What the law you know, like like her pregnancy yeah. is offensive to him. How dare she get pregnant? That yeah, she sounds she like my fucking boss. My my boss was like, "Your pregnancy is uh, annoying to me." <laughs> yeah, it's like, just thanks. not really what's in the best interest of the team. Right, we, we're we're <laughs> working as a team here. You need to not get pregnant for real. Come back trash. as soon as possible. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> At the Cracker Factory, the exploitation of women is vile. Um, Where we make all the white people. That's. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. I actually <laughs> don't know what that's. Is that, like that literal cra crackers? I don't know. Probably. Like the eating stuff? Yeah. Uh, that'll be something know. to look up later. <laughs> <laughs> is this a valid description? <laughs> yes. In essence, the worker situation remi remains the same. The wildest exploitation. The widest exploitation in ever more branches of and ever more branches of industry, which in some of them is truly horrifying. The use of female labor so as to lower salaries, based on their salaries being lower than those paid to men, non fulfillment of laws protecting women, and hidden anti worker positions by the false friend of the proletariat. Also, very current is the need to support the achievements of the women workers. Similarly, uh, Mary Otegi goes on to review the conditions of indigenous peasant women, of whom he says that together with their children, they are obligated to render gracious services to the proprietors and their families, as well as to authorities. Their miserable condition and social placement has a root. Latifundia and serfdom. Latifundia. I don't know. I said that wrong. Guaranteed, I said Latifundium. that wrong. Latifundium. Said it right. Just said it right. A large landed estate or ranch in ancient Rome. Okay. Privately owned land. And surf. As regards the petty bourgeoisie, bourgeoisie, besides pointing out the tribulations of the women of this class, the analysis of primary school teachers helps Mary Tegui uh, to establish how the social mean, the nearness to the people and their and their dedication to full-time teaching modifies their attitude and spirits opening them up so in within can be shown easily the ideals of the forgers of a new social state since none of their interest has anything in common with the capitalist regime her life her poverty her work fuses her to the proletarian masses he proposes addressing them since, in their ranks, the vanguard will recruit more and better elements. Is he saying, like, uh. Life for poverty or work fuses to her proletarian masses? Addressing them since they're... Anyways, I'm about to slice a pizza, so, Blatt, do you want to read? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Historical Background of the Women's Struggle As we saw, for Mariotiki, industrialization incorporates women into work and through this it transforms her condition and her spirit. He points out, like the classics, the double situation implied. When woman advances on the road of her emancipation over a bourgeois democratic terrain, 
In exchange, this fact provides the capitalist with cheap labor and at the same time a serious competitor to the male worker. The above cited manifesto. On the other hand, pointing out that the French Revolution included some elements of the feminist movement, he vindicates the figure of Babouf, leader of the egalitarians, whom he considers an asserter of feminist demands, and of whom he quotes the following lucid words. Do not impose silence on this sex, which does not deserve to be disdained. If you do not count on women for anything in your republic, you will make lovers of monarchy out of them. And this sex that the tyranny of men has always wanted to annul, this sex which has never been useless in the revolutions. And balancing the contribution made by the French Revolution to the emancipation of women, he said in Women and Politics, the French Revolution, however, inaugurated a regime of political equality for men, not for women. The rights of man could have been called, rather, the rights of males, with the bourgeois women ended up much more alienated from politics than with the aristocracy. Bourgeois democracy was an exclusively male democracy. Its development had to end up, however intensely favorable, to the emancipation of women. Capitalist civilization provided women with the means of increasing their capacity and improving their position in life. Therefore, what the bourgeois class does for women was said accurately. While it is capable of providing conditions for her development, it is incapable of emancipating her. Mariategui knew this very well. How despite his, this limitation, capitalism, as it develops, opens up for women the doors to various activities, including politics, very especially so in the 20th century, so much that it becomes a symbol of this. Developing this statement, Mariategui himself vindicates many notable women and points out and demonstrates the contributions many women have made to poetry, to the novel, to the arts in general, to the struggle, and politics. Thus he teaches us how to judge women of the various classes and celebrities, pointing out their merits and shortcomings, and showing what is principal in each individual case, and, what is more important, highlighting their contributions to women's advancement. Uh, women's movement. A central point, and greatly important today, is the Mariategist proposal on the general problems of women, with his theses on the feminist movement, on which subject three parts are noteworthy. Feminism, politicization of women, and organization. With respect to feminism, Mariategui held that it emerges neither artificially nor arbitrarily among us, but it corresponds with the incorporation of women into manual and intellectual work. In this viewpoint, he highlights mainly that feminism thrives among women who work outside the home and points out that the proper environments for the development of the feminist movement are the university classrooms and the labor unions. He then sets forth the directive of orienting ourselves towards those fronts so as to push forward the mobilization of women. Although it must be decided that such orientation in no way implies discounting peasant women, since we must remember that Mariategui considers the peasant woman as the most important class in our process, no doubt peasant women too are a front of mobilization and, even more, the main source which the entire feminist movement as well as the proletariat want to reach. In Feminist Demands, Mariategui proposes the essence of the feminist movement. No one should be surprised if all women do not get together in a single feminist movement. Feminism has, necessarily, several colors, various tendencies. In feminism, three months of fundamental tendencies can be distinguished. Three substantive colors, bourgeois feminism, petty bourgeois feminism, and proletarian feminism. Each one of these feminisms formulates its own demands in a different way. The bourgeois woman unites feminism with the interests of the conservative class. The proletarian woman unifies her feminism with the faith of the revolutionary multitudes in the society of the future, the class struggle. An historical fact, and not merely a theoretical asser uh, assertion, is reflected on the feminist stage. Women, like men, are reactionaries, centrists, or revolutionaries. They cannot, consequently, all fight the same battle side by side. In the current human panorama, 
class differentiates individuals more than sex. This is the essence of our woman question, the class character of the entire feminist movement, and we must keep this very much in mind. Today more than ever, since once more the organization of women is pushed forward, many groups arise, which in general are silent or hide the class character sustaining them. That is, the class which they serve and preach a unification of women to demand their rights in opposition to men, as if to serve all women united, without distinction of class, or a supposed social transformation, humanist, Christian, and in solidarity, social transformation, going through a few intermediate modalities of unclear or confused class positions. Substantially, the problem is to ascertain the class root entailed by each woman's group, organism, front, or movement, to delimit positions and establish whom they serve, which class they serve, and if they are truly or are not on the side of the people. Save me, Adobe. Uh, let's see, where exactly did you leave off? These questions take us to a crucial problem. Awesome. <clears throat> These questions take us to a crucial problem. According to whose principles, which class criteria and orientation are we to build a feminist movement serving the people? Here, Mary Ategi's position is, pr is brilliant and concise. Feminism, as a pure idea, is essentially revolutionary. Hell yeah. And to him, revolutionary essentially meant proletarian. In that way, the entire people's women's movement, which truly wants to serve the people and the revolution, has to be a feminist movement adhered to the proletariat. And today, in our country, adherence to the proletariat means adherence to the thinking of Maria Tegi. With respect to the politicization of women, the Marxist classics have always attached great importance to this point, since without it, it is impossible to develop the mobilization and organization of women. And without these women, we cannot fight, by, fight side by side with the proletariat for their own emancipation. Following his great example, the Peruvian working class, like Maria Tegui, has pointed out the importance of the politicization of women and highlighted that its deficiency, or lack thereof, serves reaction. Quote, women, for the most part, due to their little or no political education, are not a renovating force in contemporary struggles, but a reactionary force from figures and aspects of life in the world. This is sufficiently clear. What we must ask ourselves is this, what does this politicization mean? For the founder of the Communist Party, it meant the determined and militant incorporation of women into the class struggle, their mobilization together with the people's interests, their integration into organizations, individually learning themselves the ideology of the working class, and all this is a part of, assessed by, and under the leadership of the proletariat. In synthesis, to incorporate women into politics, into class struggle, under the leadership of the working class. With respect to the organization of women, Marxism teaches that in order to face their enemies and struggle for their class interests, the proletariat has no other recourse than to organize itself. This principle is applied to the people, who are strong only if organized, and therefore also to women, who can only fight successfully when they are organized. As a convicted and confessed Marxist, Maria Tegi applied these principles creatively. He paid very special attention to organizing the women workers, as seen in the proposals in the manifesto of the CGTP referred to above. Quote, All this accumulation of calamities weighing on the exploited woman cannot be resolved except by immediate organization. In the same way that unions have to build their youth cadres, they must create their women's sections, where our future women militants will be educated. Maria Tegi showed the same concern when under his guidance, the statue of the mentioned confederation was getting ready to form a permanent women's commission at the executive committee level. Unfortunately, these orientations have not been correctly put into practice. It has remained a purely bureaucratic union position called feminine affairs or some similar name when it exists at all without organically accommodating the women's sections of the unions, thus it remains a pending task. Later on, in March 1930, the Communist Party approved the following motion, quote, 
First, creating a provisional sectariat to organize socialist youth under immediate control of the party. Second, creating a provisional secretariat to organize the working women under the leadership and control of the party. Third, both secretariats will struggle for the immediate organization of youth of both sexes for their political and ideological education as a preparatory stage for their admission to the party. From Martinez de la Tour, uh, from volume two, our emphasis. Here, Maria Tegui's thesis is materialized by the need to pay attention to the women's organizations, even at the most advanced political levels. And his position is expressed that the organization of women is ultimately the question of organizing them under leadership and control of the working class and the party. Such proposals lead us to ask ourselves about each women's group, organism, front, or movement. For which class, how, and for what are we, are we, are we women organized? And keep in mind that these points can only be satisfactorily resolved, that is, for the class and the people, by adhering ourselves to the working class positions. These three questions, feminism, politicization of women, and organization of women, and the theses which Maria Tegui established, which must be studied and applied consistently, since only that way can, on, can an authentic popular feminist movement be developed. Number four, the emancipation of women. In this point too, like in the classics, Mary Ategi also holds that under capitalism and industrialization, women make advances on the road to their emancipation. However, under this system, she does not even reach full legal equality. For that reason, a consistent feminist movement seeks to go further, and on this road, it necessarily has to join the struggle of the proletariat. This understanding led the great proletarian thinker of our country to state, quote, the feminist movement appears solidly identified with the revolutionary movement, and that although born of liberalism, only with the revolution could feminism be fulfilled. Born of a liberal womb, feminism has not yet been able to operate in the capitalist process. It is only now, when the historic path of democracy reaches its end, that woman acquires the political and legal rights of the male. And it was the Russian Revolution which explicitly and categorically conferred on women the equality and the liberty which for more than a century, from Babouf and the egalitarians of the French Revolution, she had in vain clamored for, from feminist demands. And so it is that in parallel with the construction of a new society, the new woman will be emerging who will be substantially different from the one formed by the now declining civilization. These new women will be forged in the revolutionary crucible and will place the old type of woman deformed by the old exploitative system in the back room of history, a system which now sinks for the genuine dignifying of women. In the same measure as the socialist system replaces the individualist system, feminine luxuriousness and elegance will decay. Humanity will lose some luxurious mammals, but will, ins will gain instead many women. The clothing of the women of the future will be less ostentatious and expensive, but the condition of this new woman will be dignified, and the axis of feminine life will progress from the individual to the social. A woman, in some, will be less expensive, but will be worth more, from women in politics. Besides these basic ideas, Mary Ategi takes care of other problems intimately linked to women in particular, divorce, marriage, love, etc. He treats them with fine irony and takes sharply critical positions on them. However, as a good Marxist, he does not center his attention on them until taking them as the until taking them as the principal issue. To do so is to forget the principal struggle and fundamental goal while spreading confusion and disorienting the revolutionary struggle. Up to this point, we have presented an exposition of the central thesis of Maria Tegi's thought on the women question. Which we have, in which we have used plentiful quotations for the same reasons we had when dealing with the Marxist positions on the subject. Okay. And whoever else. I'll go. Okay, so it's Maria Tegi. Maria Tegi? That's how we're pronouncing it? Okay. Okay. I'm going to go with you. You're Maria Tegi. <laughs> I'm so fucking terrible at pronouncing these shits. Developing the feminist movement following Maria Tegi. Current relevance of Maria Tegi. A conclusion is obvious from what has been said. 
And these Mariategi are the thesis, thesis, Jesus Christ, hold on. I can read. The theses of Mariategi held on the women question resulted from the consistent application of Marxism-Leninism to the specific conditions in a semi-feudal and semi-colonial society like ours. On this, generally, there is no disagreement, and even when there is no open adherence, at least by silence and acceptance of such conclusions is shown here. However, the question is not whether Maria Tegi's thought was correct uh, was a correct application of Marxism on the country. The central issue is how relevant is his thought on the present? This is a subject on which, while expressing an apparent recognition of Maria Tegi and so as not to attack his immense and still growing prestige, some question is current its current relevance by mentioning that more than 40 years have elapsed and raising erroneously and treacherously the need to take into account the creative development of Marxism in order to surpass it. Analyzing this point leads us to review, if only in passing, some of the positions that have been sustained in this country on the woman question. Thus, the notable and contentious thinker Don Manuel Gonzalez Prada I put an extra R in there for you guys. Uh, <laughs> handled this question in the 1904 work Slaves of the Church. And now, uh, a work now included in Hours of Struggle. There, while expressing important concepts such as we can't know the people well until we have studied the social and legal condition of women, the moral elevation of man is measured by the concept he has on women, for the ignorant and brutal man, the woman is just a female. At, for the thinker and cultured man, she is a brain and a heart. Just as we carry the family name uh, of our family, we carry the moral making of our mother. The motive force, the great propellant of societies, does not function noisily as at the plaza nor at the revolutionary circle. It works in the home, which help to center our attention on the importance of the woman on the other hand he expresses ideas as such as the emancipation of women like the freedom of the slave is not due to christianity but of but to philosophy the protestant nation feminine ascension is taking place so assuredly that complete emancipation is already foreseen Slaves and serfs owe their personal dignity to the efforts and noble, uh, of noble and delicate persons. The Catholic woman will only get emancipated by the energetic action of men. And in the battle of ideas, no ally is more powerful than love. Thus we see that the contribution of Gonzalez Prada to the emancipation of women overall positive. He pointed out that and denounce or he pointed out and denounced the oppression of women the important role they fulfill and the necessity to resolve the problem and set forth the emancipation of women although for him the root of the problem is catholicism which prevails in women he believes that it is possible to reach the emancipation under capitalism and he centers the problem in the individual yet his ideas overall represent a positive contribution in this and other topics in studying the problem of women in the country as these i er, and these ideas turn out to be more outstanding when we see nearly 30 years later uh jorge basadre proposing gregor oh my god gregorio mara marañon demanded that the essential role of women is love ew while the essential role of men is work that is why little boys prefer to play with soldiers symbols of struggle and of effort of urge to supremacy while little girls prefer to play with dolls uh, precociously motherly by virtue of a command of nature a charm of the creole woman even when not uh, mestiza a different from women it is, is different from women 
other or, oh my god my reading is getting so bad is different from women of other latitudes by a proper flavor like a fruit or vegetable while oh my god really while on the other hand is a highest uh, the highest superiority of men is in their minds and since the american mind is still determinedly influenced by Europe, the American glory is lost or lessened. A notoriously beautiful woman in America can, on the other hand, raise interest anywhere. Peru on the possibilities and problems. Here, the position is so clearly reactionary that comments are unnecessary. Yeah, <laughs> that was fucking reactionary shit. If the Basadre... If in Basadre the ruling class speak of to us of feminine nature whose essence is love, they also in 1940 express themselves through Carlos Miro Quesado Laos as follows. The role of women in modern life is manifold. These are no longer the times forever gone when women when work was forbidden to her. Quite the contrary, today women work in diverse activities because she has shown she can act as efficiently as man. She therefore has the duty to study and to prepare herself for the future. And if these chores, women share the duties with men, in others they are and will always be better than men. And what happens is the woman contributes to the life many things which are innate to her. She has the hand of mother and nurse. That is femininity, which thank God, or thanks to God, they will never lose despite the 20th century of wars and revolutionary theories. The word consolation evokes woman. After making man the creator, put her at his side to be his mate. To give the stimulus and sweeten his life. First she must obey her parents, then her teachers, then later on her husband, and always duty. With Basadre, the exploiting classes postponed the work of women. The Miro Quesada having new requirements, they exalt and demand the work of women. But deep down, both are based on feminine nature. But not only in this field do these ideas appear. Incorrect positions are also found in writings and magazines which claim to be revolutionary and even Marxist. We read uh, in them concepts like the following. Speaking of the senses of life that they participate in social change will enable we understand it's meant it's meant women to undo their existential problem since the sense of life would then reside in the profit of each individual is able to offer her or his neighbor by way of will and effort considering the subject women and society after attempting to outline Engel's thesis on the development of the family and the following is said we are possessed of the myth and <sighs> We are possessed of the myth of the inferiority of women and from that arises the need of liberating women. Her liberation can only occur when the socio-economic structure changes with the development of the new society. Thus liberation is highlighted but not its social background which is kept ambiguous and impre imprecise ending up centered on how to regulate the relationship between the sexes in answer to the new ideology of the women. If the woman is equal or must be equal to man, the basis of such relationship would be to liberate the woman from religious alienation, to exercise the right to choose her mate without obeying prejudice about masculine initiative, um, to not understand women's uh, liberation as a synonym for three love, unfortunately <laughs> uh, and the woman being equal to man she must not remain separate from the from politics by alleging her feminine condition love as a starting point for her social change should be the stimulus for youth men and women to struggle to build the egalitarian world without oppression or injustice 
And in publishing the story, Tomb of the Unemployed, a Christmas story which handily spread the generosity of women and the selfishness of men, a treacherous version of feminine nature. Later on, the two ghosts became silent, each with its own thoughts, the woman in her past, the man in his future, the woman on what must be done and the man on what needs to be done for him. One with generosity and one with selfishness, always nailed to the forehead, always wrestling in the depths of their conscious, consciousness, or con consciences. Evidently, the ideas contained in Mujer, despite their apparent Marxist and revolutionary posturing, neatly reveal a bourgeois background and in no way do they express the proletarian position on the woman question. What does this summary show us? The hard, cold truth that the question is by no means a time frame when these positions are presented, nor is it the problem to take into account the creative development of Marxism, but what is central to the class position on a proposal is based. We have seen a position prior to Maria Tegui's to Maria Tegui, that of Gonzalez Prada, which despite preceding Maria Tegui by some 30 years entails many positive elements, as well as a position contemporary, con contemporaneous with Maria Tegui's, that of Basadre, which is openly reactionary. Finally, two later positions, 30 years after Maria Tegui and that of Miro Quesada, which renovates some criteria but is still reactionary and that of the magazine Mujer under Marxist colors, which definitely adheres to the bourgeois positions despite it being presented to us as revolutionary and in the service of work, uh, women's emancipation. So I like that like there's they always, it's a time old question, right? Uh, or a time old thing that Marxists will hear. They'll say, people say all the time, they'll say, well, all those books you're reading are super old. They don't have any relevance of what's happening today. Uh, and that's just false. I mean, they, these are like class antagonisms, which are just as relevant, you know, in the 1900s as they are right now. <sighs> It also kind of speaks to like class reductionism, which is of course not a new thing. It's, mm -hmm. we are still dealing with it today. And of course they were still dealing with it back then with, you know, your social chauvinists being like, oh, we don't need to worry about the issues that women are going through. Don't worry about it. But those are all interconnected to the class struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find that a lot of people that argue that all this stuff is outdated typically have not read this stuff <laughs> yeah that's a that's a common theme does somebody want to finish up the reading uh, what is the conclusion as we said the question is the class character on which a position is based in this case the position on the woman question with Mary Tegi the greatest exponent of our working class the proletarian position on the women's question on the woman question is established. He set the basis of the proletarian political line on this question, and his positions are completely current. On this topic, as well as on others dealing with the revolutionary politics of the proletariat in our country, therefore, developing a, developing a people's women's movement demands today more than ever a firm and consistent adherence to the thought of Mary Tegi, starting from an acceptance of its current relevance. Retaking Mary Tegi's Road The struggle of, the, of Peruvian women and of proletarian women has a long tradition, tilled with their blood for over 50 years. Similarly, the feminist organizations are long-standing, nevertheless the process of organizing Peruvian women began to expand in the 1960s, forecasting a brilliant perspective, though a long and twisted one. At present, we have a multitude of organizations 
of varying extensions, extension and levels, and what is more important, sprouting old seeds, we already see signs pointing to genuine people's move people's women's movement. Today, we have a National Council of Women with 50 years of experience nurtured by the decrepit and obsolete theory of feminine nature, a women's rights movement upholding a feminism aimed at liberation from dependence on men, on men, a gamut of organizations being formed which support the current regime for the benefit of its corporativist process under the orientation and control of uh, Sinemos and under its concept of participation of women, part of their fully participatory democracy, which obscures that the root of women's oppression is private property and the subjugation of women that began with it, which, twisting our history and using a lowly and vulgar materialism, propagandizes that in 1968 the revolutionary process began that seeks the authentic liberation of women with political equality and active participation concluding we are the ones who must create the various forms of women's organizations saturated with the sly and underhanded bourgeois feminism and the national people's union of peruvian women a right opportunist organization which staged as usual a collaborationist apparatus totally devoted to the service of the regime. This increase in organizational strengthening of the masses of women demands a serious investigation of the woman question and a class analysis of the organizations that exist or are being formed. So the camps can define themselves in order to establish, as in other fields, the two lines on the women question. The counter-revolutionary line commanded by imperialism and the middle bourgeois, bourgeois hold on sorry I had to cough um, the counter-revolutionary line commanded by imperialism and the middle bourgeois and the revolutionary line whose commanded and center is the proletariat command and center is the proletariat that will help the organizational development of the people's women's movement which of necessity requires its construction to be unleashed amidst the two-line struggle the expression of the class struggle and the similar and conflicting interest of the contending classes and of course it must not be forgotten that within each line there are various and difference there are variations and differences in operation according to the classes grouped around each line. From there, the problem consists of establishing the two contrary lines and within each one of the variations and nuances of the line. Establishing which position is in command of each line and depending on the class each represents gives each of the lines in struggle a revolutionary or counter-revolutionary character. All that's been exposed takes us therefore to the necessity of retaking Mary Tegge's road on the woman question in order to serve the formation and development of a people's women's movement conceived as a movement generated by the proletariat among the masses of women with the following characteristics adherence to the thought of Mary Tegge class consciousness, class conscious organization of the masses, subject to de democratic centralism. The concentration of such a movement sets forth for us two problems. One, ideological political construction, which necessarily implies providing it with principles and program. Two, or Organic construction, which we can serve by forming cores or groups of activists for carrying the principles and program to the masses of women workers, peasants, professionals, university and secondary school students, etc. They would work toward the politicization of women, mobilizing them through their struggles and organizing them to adhere 
to the political struggle in harmony with the orient orientation and politics of the proletariat. To conclude this contribution to the study and understanding of the woman question, it is pertinent to transcribe a declaration of principles and program which for some time has been circulating in our midst. Documents which, while emphasizing their character as ongoing projects, can serve as a useful basis for discussion of the ideological political construction of the ongoing people's women's movement. All right. We did it. That's, Excellent job, everyone. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's like stuff on here. Oh, I. Yeah, there were a couple of paragraphs in there that I forgot to breathe. <laughs> like in the middle. <laughs> reading was excellent okay so basically i think we can tldr it to the woman's question is not a question of nature it is a class struggle right what do you think agreed seems to me that um women are humans <laughs> whoa what yeah, they, yeah, like surprise true. revelation. They <laughs> they weren't so different after all. And uh, may, maybe we need to be doing more to to uplift all of humanity instead of the uh, as Luna says, "Got mine, fuck you" kind of mindset. Yeah. Oh my god, that is such Man, an I American can... thing, too, right? Like. Yeah. And if we're gonna do yeah. it, we're gonna be the best. At it. <laughs> oh, I yeah. love the. I don't remember the quote off the top of my head but the quote of um all feminism should be revolutionary is that kind of how it goes yeah that's a great quote um it really puts the nail in you know liberal feminism's coffin of you can't just oh, no. like read a bunch of books and then be like cool feminism's finished we did it thank you <laughs> right like so yeah like the liberal feminism the revolution happens within you right like you're you're like you feel like better and empowered but your relation to you know class or like your relation to capital uh, hasn't fucking changed right so that's not really a fucking struggle it, it seems like l oh, sorry I was going to say, it seems like liberal feminism really just props up capitalism. It just yeah. adds women to mm -hmm. being exploited just as much. Uh, putting them on the same level is still massive exploitation for the capitalists. Capitalism, but, capitalism is yeah. always a co-op, whatever is a threat to it. If it doesn't succeed in overthrowing capitalism, then capitalism uses that language. You can't, you can't fight it the same way twice. Right. All capitalism or all liberal feminism has brought to the table is the idea of the girl boss, which is not, that's not the epitome of what women should strive for. You should not strive to be like, you know, well, now I get to step on people. Right. Yeah. I also like how it talked about family structures and monogamy and how that's a holdover of, you know, uh, anti women ideas. Ingalls did a whole, uh, the on the origins of the family so maybe we can read that one although that one is like one of my least favorite thing is of his because i feel like uh, the way that all old white men talk about primitive or you know they say <laughs> primitive society you know is uh, just like um kind of a fucked yeah. up view of it Mar Mark Daniels didn't have a good relationship with um, indigenous, indigenous yeah. Especially in the Americas. They, they, communism is, is to, as they explain it, they like, they didn't discover it. They, um, they, they themselves co opted a lot of their own ideas from indigenous peoples and then just kind of discredited them. And <laughs> right. Which is not, it was, fu that's fucked up. That's, it's not good. Okay. Who are we going to go to? Who should we go see? Let me. I'm gonna hop out of Discord and hop in the uh, Twitch. Chat? Okay. Thanks yeah. for being here, everyone. Ooh. Thank you. I think I'm gonna hop out of here too. Thank you, um, 
Adobe Cult for, for coming in and reading with us and Blot. Uh, I really appreciate it. it. It makes it much more fun when we can all discuss it together. So I really, I really like this and I'm going to keep doing this in the future. So I hope you liked it too. It's fun. Thank you guys. Yes. Everyone did a great job. Yes. Lovely. Okay, so yes, thank you all for being here. Um, I appreciate you so much. Um, and this here, I'm gonna put my Twitter in here. And Brazilian comrades, if you want to, uh, DM me and we could talk more about what's going on. That would be really cool. I'm Sal. Hi. <laughs> Sal. Um, I'm one of, I think, six of us right now. Um, we're going to get another member soon, too. But I'm Sal. Um, we have other members. Uh, Reggie, Hayes, you'll see. I think JJ is coming on this Friday. And Chairman Kooks should be on Saturday. Tomorrow, what we're doing is the last episode of um, How You Kong Move the Mountains. Um, then what we'll do is we're going to most likely read Black Bolshevik. So that's what we're going to be doing on Thursdays from uh, after we finish tomorrow. And then we're going to do news on Friday. And then on Saturday... Um, we are going to do on contra contradiction with chairman kooks <sighs> yes thank you uh for being here diana yes uh chair lady salon <laughs> oh nice that's cool caboose okay so i don't really see anyone who i want to raid today Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's read somebody with not that many. But they say I'm a tanky, I'm, oh, a, I'm a tanky, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a tanky. tanky, yeah, I'm a tanky. We're riding that tank, mowing down the fucking snowflakes. Yes. You know, we'll just go to Pinko. <laughs> we go to Pinko every time. But fuck it. I like Pinko. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Love you. Bye.